everyone, welcome to another episode of SRB Gaming. I'm Chris, and as always, joined by Richard from at Nerd Chic Universe. What's up, you beautiful nerds? And, and Chris here. And yeah, he's here. Oh, oh wow, man. Oh, have, yeah, he's here. We have, <laughs> we have both of the Reaction Brothers here today. What? So. Yeah. Yeah, the second, the, like, Nancy's one of my, like, the, my Let's Play co hosts now, and now Richard's technically my uh, streaming co host. So, Chris has just become a third wheel for all of these. <laughs> The guy, you know, the guy who co-owns this channel, you know, <laughs> you're number one, too. The reason, it, the reason it's Super Reaction Bros. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, on today's episode, we are uh, checking a look at the beginning of the Key 3s with the 2024 Summer Game Fest opening ceremonies. This is supposed to be roughly 92 minutes to two hours. Uh, Keely, <laughs> Give me. Keely has made it clear it's... The main focus is going to be on the, fis the remaining fiscal year for 2024. So that's like between now and like early next year, basically. That's the main focus. It's gonna, they've already confirmed a couple stuff, like uh, Slitterhead from the original Silent Hill creator will be here. Uh, first look at the Among Us animated series. Uh, the First Descendant, AKA uh, Koreans know, really love asses, um, female asses. <laughs> You'll, uh, you'll see what I mean. Um, uh, and a couple others, but I'll, I'll stay bummed on that. I usually kept up with the news. As always, Keely has asked people to keep their expectations in check. I have kept my expectations in check as well. But, like, yeah, I'm, I don't know what to really hope for. Like, there's a lot of stuff I want within, like, between now and the ending of Summer Game Fest. Like, new announcements, old announcements, like, Updates on current stuff coming out, like stuff we haven't heard about in a while, and like there's a lot of stuff. But like, is there anything you two are looking forward to? Um, gotta admit, most of the stuff that I would really love to hear about not likely to show up here, just because it's either stuff that's way too far out or just they don't usually make their presence known that much at any of Keeley's stuff. I mean, so you know, like. Like the Warframe guys almost never actually do anything here, so they've they've got their own Tenocon thing coming up in a couple, coming up in July. So if they're going to do anything, it's going to be there. And like anything from like Sony about FF7 Part Three, they're not going to talk about that for another two years. So everything else we already kind of know about. Chris, sir? Yeah, I think I'm on the same ship there, pretty much. I mean, I've been doing much gaming lately, but from what I've been hearing, at least it's. I'm, just want, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring for the rest of this year, at the end of this year, pretty much. To see what they're going to deliver, you know, any promises or something, pretty much any good surprises that would be great, any, anything at this point. Yeah, I don't know what to expect. There's a lot of hype about stuff that's more, more likely not going to be here. There's hype for stuff that is going to be here, but I'm, I'm not really we interested. Want to be there. We all want Sorry, to be just there. you no saying hype reminded me of something. Oh my god, do you, do, do you remember that dude from like, I think it was like either last year or the year before, you remember that one dude who was like doing the Forza presentation and he had the Ben Stein charisma going on, just the full, you know, completely dull deadpan delivery the entire time? I don't recall, if it was that bad I'd probably, I'd probably back this destroyed it from well, memory. <laughs> the dude gave full like, Bueller, Bueller, while trying to talk about Forza, I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was like from one of the Microsoft things from the new Forza a couple of years ago, but but still, I just remember that being like, oh, good God, just like, please get someone who actually can sound excited. <laughs> and like a robot? <laughs> like yes. A robot. Yes. Well, I think, I think that's one positive I can say about that, where we're like not really having a specific game we're hoping to see is that that's what's great about Keeley's presentation, more or less. Probably mine is the Gamescom opening night live. That's yeah. usually like whatever, but like, it's great that I don't know what I'm getting from him sometime, a bunch yeah. of at a time. Like, it could he be something. He did a good job at it. it could be it some, yeah, it could be something groundbreaking. It could, something, it could be a genre I give no shits about, or it could be something truly breathtaking or shocking. Like, bringing up last year we start what was it what did we start with i forgot what we started with last year but it was like something oh it was a uh, prince of persia the lost crown we started yeah. with last year mm -hmm. and then ended with the uh what was the final fantasy 7 a new look of final fantasy 7 rebirth mm -hmm. as well so like I, and then you know there was that weird final fantasy fake out yeah. in the middle which was it was not apparently not intentional <laughs> at all yeah well i like about keely pretty much that he he, he tends to get to every type of gamer. So it's like, yeah, we're going to have moments where it's like, oh, it's 
kind of game that we're into. It's like, you know, it's like, okay, you know, it don't matter. But he, he caters, that's what I love about it. That's why he's like, he caters to every every type of gamer. And he does it in a great way. Also, and also he probably charges an arm and a fucking leg for an advertising oh, yeah. commercial. Just for a commercial oh, itself. Did you hear about that? Or yeah, you hear how much? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, okay, except for once he'll just give a pass to. Roughly 30 seconds of game ad screen time on one of his shows is like a quarter million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most of these companies got that budget to, and got, you know, they got a budget for that kind of thing in the first place. So, you know, I don't think they're really that worried. Yeah. No, it, but, it goes higher depending on how much more time you got. Mm -hmm. Also, just going to what you guys were saying before, the other thing is that Keeley is also a enough of a showman and a salesman that he at least... He knows. He, he at least... Can sound excited about this stuff, even yeah. it's even if it's stuff he doesn't necessarily. Yeah, he's like, he makes it. Of. He makes it. That's what that. Yeah, exactly. That's what Killy does, and he knows how to sell it. It's like even if he's not into it, it's like he still he still sells the crap out of it. Where it's like he, as if he is excited for it, you know, and just selling it to make sure he gets it to the other gamers, stuff like that. Going, hey, look at this, you know. It's like let's check this out. Yeah, so like a handful of stuff I already know we're expecting to see, but overall, curious to see if how surprised we will be. Uh, I think. It's easy to say we need to keep our expectations in check, though. So, and that's coming from me. Yeah. Uh, see last year's reaction to Rebirth. Mm -hmm. um, well, like I, like I was saying earlier, like, you know, we don't really know, you know, we know a couple of things that are showing up, but for the most part, yeah, we're basically open to be surprised, basically. Yeah, at this point, yeah, me coming into this myself, I'm honestly coming in with low expectations, because, again, I've been following a lot of stuff, and I haven't been hearing a lot of I mean, you know, Probably you guys have, but I haven't really heard much stuff lately. So I'm like, okay, I'm keeping my expectations low because I'm like, I don't want to get overexcited for something where I'm like, oh, I'm wanting to see if they're going to show this. No, I'm like, all right, let's see what they're going to deliver. Let's, let's see what they're going to give us. Okay, so here you guys go. This is going to be our reactions to the 2024 Summer Game Fest opening ceremony. So let's do this. Enjoy. <gasps> yes. Mature and boobs. That may trigger boobs for those with photosensitive epilepsy. Okay. Curse words, possibly. Please Whoa, there we go. The stage, hey, the Kyle Watson. The Game Awards, Jeff Keighley. Wow, I can see his freaking mark. It's a star right there. <laughs> You can see the little mark yeah. sticker right there. Yeah, it's fine. At least it's a cute I know, it's just, it's just fun to spot stuff like that as a, you as a former theater kid. Yeah, it's just fun to spot shit. Yeah. We are so thrilled to be here with you, and this is a showcase of what's next for games, live from the YouTube uh -oh. Theater here in L.A. Now, if you're watching this show, first of all, welcome. I know everyone around the world is joining us for this special moment. And I know if you watch this show, you don't just play games, you deeply care about this art form and the health of this industry. The good news is that we have a lot of amazing games to show you from creators around the world over the next two hours. Two hours. Oh, right. It is the two hours. <laughs> Chris, Chris is like, it's going to be a long two hours. This has been a tumultuous and difficult year Thank with you. company yeah. layoffs and studio closures, which have disappointed all of us. Yeah. Over, but it's there's also something else March, happening. Over 9,000 people is laid off. Yeah. And the industry. And thanks to digital distribution, smaller teams and new creators are finding incredible success. Take a look at this list from Game Discover of the top 10 best selling okay, games boss. on Steam so far this year. Two of, two of them are considered, you know, big company games, but the other eight come from indie, indie. mid sized teams, yep. or solo developers. Oh, well, true. And look at this list. Richard, it's, it's for cool, you. Right? And I get you inspired like poker? that new it's ideas, that, but a new like. teams, and <laughs> smaller <laughs> creators and dude, can the size, and the size, the 68-megabyte size It's reminded the big companies <laughs> yeah. that they have to treat their developers right, there because today, there are many paths to sustainability and success, that and right. that's what makes this industry so, so great. Fuck yes. <laughs> And you'll see that reflected in the show today, because over the next two hours, we'll have big franchises on stage like Star Wars, 
Batman and Harry Potter. No, so yeah, I know, the, I know, I know. I did that when I read up, and I was like, oh no, I know Jim It's Potter. the MetaQuest game. Yeah, I know. But at the same time, I kind of love that. I love that he pulled his thumb and index finger back when he did Harry Potter. Subtle middle finger. When you see a game that piques your interest, please wish list it, or even better, send it to a friend and get them excited. That's how we together can grow the gaming community. And we are going to do that today over the next two hours as we have a lot of games to show you, plus Day of the Devs directly after with even more indie titles. Which has become a non-profit organization games? for indie, for indie developers. Which is all right. good. It all begins right now. Well, I like now. it though. He's not, he's not BS and he's like, we know what the hell is going Okay, here we go. First announcement. Everybody keep your expectations. Uh, hey, look, this is Lego. Lego. Pie, auditioning for the uh, oh, the lead and unannounced action oh, game. Wow. We see you as Marcus Sidekick. Oh sure, Side I get that a lot, but uh, check out my range. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Range. 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 <laughs> range. <laughs> oh, this guy. Straight. Gorilla. Oh. Gorilla. Oh! Oh, that's right, I heard about this! Look at that shit. It's a Lego Horizon game, I heard about this! Give me one of those. Ooh, sandwich. Ooh, sandwich. You know, it's funny, oh, she's voiced by Ashley Birch, who knows a new comedy, too. Hot dog guy is Aloy, an amazing I heard about this! Oh, yeah. Shit, sign me up. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, you played Horizon! This is gonna be fun. Right? The first one, yeah. The game's honestly only so fun, I just never had a chance to play Yeah, this got, this, for me, the Sally got leaked. I didn't believe it, honestly. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. It's a, it's a, it, it was one of those, like, when you, when you heard it, you were like, Wow, what is this place? I, like I said, that's the great part about uh, Ashley was Ashley Birch voicing uh, Aloy. It's like, she gives you that comedic She gives you that comedic spin to it, her character as well. Oh, different costumes for him, too. It's Lego. You definitely have to give him a costume. Hey, Roy, the Thunderjaw's back. Oh, right, the Thunderjaw. I'll try the Thunderjaw. Like, oh, right, we forgot about that. <laughs> that is fucking awesome. Man. That Gwensick Gorilla, I'm like, oh, shit, that's where I heard about this. That is fucking awesome. Man. It makes no sense for this universe, but sure. Lego Horizon Adventures. That is fucking awesome. Switch! Five, switch, switch! And Steam. Awesome. And Steam, which means Steam Deck. Christa, Christa. Leave it, leave it, <laughs> leave it. <laughs> that was unexpected. That is awesome. Yeah, that <laughs> I fun? love that, that shit. Sign me up. Don't <laughs> mean to switch. <laughs> That's what got me. On PC and Nintendo Switch. Switch. It's a playful, lighthearted story inspired by the world of Horizon, designed with two-player action in mind, supporting couch and online co-op. Couch. Now we're gonna completely shift the tone to the next game from shift Torn Banner Studios, the developers behind Chivalry 2. For their next project, they are proud to announce No More Room in Hell 2, the sequel to the 2011 award-winning source mod. Eight players start separate in the dark, and okay. it's up to you to find your friends and survive with permadeath. Here is the first look. Oh, shit. No More Room in Hell 2. No more room. Yeah, it's hard. You gotta find them, though. That's funny. You have to find your friends. Dead. Kind of remind me of um, not Left 4 Dead, uh, Zombie U. Yeah. Yeah, it does have the light Left 4 Dead vibes. We're getting more, uh, yeah, Zombie U. This is more like the, giving them more of the realism to it than what would uh, Left 4 Dead does, you know, with the comedic side of it. Here you can see it's definitely much darker. Permadeath. Yeah. Oh. Permadeath, that's what he used to say, permadeath. A player co op. Massive replay. 
Imperial map. Perhaps, yeah. Because he, I'm pretty sure the change of map always changes up. Oh shit! Or they might, or what they might. Yeah, so it's like, that, yeah, is that it's one huge map. No more room in hell, too. But, but your spawn points are always randomized, yeah. so you're ending up at different parts of it. Exactly. How this Halloween it looks? Really it sounds really like it sounds like you have to meet up with them at some point. I mean, me guys, if it's even someone, half the size of like Breath of the Wild, it's like Street Fighter Six. Yeah, it's only half the size. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth last year, when she was sitting in the audience. Well, this year she's joining us on stage. We're thrilled to have her with us. Please welcome Curious Joy. Hey. I think I remember her. Thank you, okay. Jeff. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here at Summer Game Fest. I'm here with you today to share some even more super fun trailers. So let's get straight to another world premiere. This is a highly anticipated game from a beloved franchise. Let's take a look. Wow, that could be anything. As young witches and wizards, we all dream of oh, Harry Potter and our favorite Potter. heroes. When it comes to Quidditch, we've all wondered. Though, Do I have with the actual characters, to be the time. next Quidditch star. Oh, oh, you're playing. Are you playing Ginny? To beat the toughest opponent. I mean that. Uh, they're bringing. They're, they're doing a new Quidditch game. They what have the one. Like. To chase your dreams at any price. No challenge is too great. No dream is too big. So ask yourself, do you have what it takes? Do you have the heart of the village champion? Magic is in the air. And in J.K. Rowling's pocket, unfortunately. Yeah. Quit it. Harry Potter quit it. champions. Hmm. I think Jenny's more like your, yeah. Next chapter takes flight September 3rd. Oh. PlayStation, Switch. Xbox, Switch, and Steam in the Epic Game Store. So. Yeah. That's Harry Potter Quidditch Champions launching worldwide on September 3rd for consoles and PC. Now we move from the Potterverse to a brand new world. It hails from a single developer, Gavin Eisenbeis, up in Seattle, who's been making games all by himself for a decade. His last title, Choo Choo Charles, was a fan oh, favorite. He showed me so is, this, this is next, next game a few months ago, and I really wanted to be doing it. <laughs> I really Get ready to backstab, race, or cooperate with up to 20 of your friends in Cuff Bust. Cuff Bust? All right, down. This is a prison escape game? What the fuck? I think it's like a prison escape type of game. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what it is. It's like a prison escape type of game. But in this in this style uh, stylistic type of game. <laughs> so Jern John Tron's trying to hold the door. Jailing forever. Open the gate. He's <laughs> banging her head on the damn keyboard, that works. <laughs> oh shit. Screwdriver. Got a spoon. Okay. So I escape Into the sewers! <laughs> Only to escape prison. It's interesting so far. Shit. And they're saying one dude did this. Yeah, yeah. one dude did this, yeah. Yeah. Impressive work. I, know, I mean, right? to be fair, one guy did lead some company, so I. Yeah. Oh shit. That's very I'm just saying again, this, this is very impressive. Oh, so you, it's like there's different vehicles that have been stolen. Oh shit. Hey, <laughs> XK! Oh shit. Oh shit! So wait. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? And this is definitely an indie game. Oh shit! 
Puff Buzz. Puff Buzz coming 25. Maybe, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> I like that. I don't know, to be honest. Right? And remember, that's all made by one person. So, it's a, I guess that's just, just the game, is just you escape different kinds of prisons? Right. Yeah, I think it's what it is. One of this year's most anticipated games is Star Wars Outlaws, coming out on yes. August 30th from Ubisoft. And this is going to be a quick trailer because they're showing this at Ubisoft Forward. Yeah. We live the life of a scoundrel. They're going to show on more Monday at Ubisoft Forward. <laughs> Probably more gameplay. We're going to see a full gameplay show yeah, six. during Ubisoft's Forward yeah. event, streaming as part of the continuing Summer Game Fest events. But right now, we've got an exclusive new glimpse of the game, just a small taste. Of what's to come. I honestly haven't seen a trailer since last year's Ubisoft yeah. Forward. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna get now. It's a trailer. A friend needs a little something stolen. I can't wait for that. That looks good. Let's raise the stage, shall we? Hey, Lando! Yeah. Hey, Jabba, too. So definitely. Yeah, did they mention her right cool yeah, I don't place. I don't remember. Yeah, free shape prequel trilogy. Pretty cool original trilogy. Now, I think they said they confirmed this was taking place between episode uh, three and four. Like in between there. Yeah. Just uh, so the the Star Wars Rebels age then. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, it's like this is when everything starts to get, you know, really more hey, strict. Hey, hip hop there. I was just noticing Everything we're showing you so far, I think, is going to be you know coming out uh, you know this year. Cuff bus, I'm not quite sure, but it's like it's so cool that there's stuff that we're going to get to play in the next few months here. All right, well, moving back to smaller really teams, a few weeks ago, I had a chance to play forward. through this next game, and I have to say it is really spectacular. Neva comes from Nomada Studio, the creators of the Game Award-winning game Greece. It chronicles the story of Alba, a woman bound to a curious wolf cub. Here's your first ever look at the gameplay. I guess the. the how you he spell said Neva. I think I remember this one from like one of the other things. Yeah, was, if they show yeah. it, if they show yeah, yeah this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they showed it before. Where that 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 wolf was a lot bigger. Yeah, like oh, a lot bigger. But here we're getting more of uh, context of like okay, so you, you meet it when it's a cub. Tiny people. <laughs> mm -hmm. These games, games are so beautifully artistic. Mm -hmm. You it, see, if we were doing Day of the Desert actions, you'd be saying that or you'd be. You know how I am. No, no, I know you are. I'm just we, saying. We literally just set up like a little button thing with a sound bite, just yeah. like make it a tricky game. Make it a tricky game. He's like, oh, you said it. It's, uh, have a no, if we make it a drinking game, then we're gonna kill the audience. Yeah. <laughs> See, look, it's the. Uh... That's just. <laughs> Don't make that noise. Never. That was a, that was a letter off. Trust me, that game is such a true work of art, especially when we get into some of the combat. It is tons of fun to play. And there's much more coming later today in the Devolver Direct, which will air directly after the Day of the Devs. Yeah, they show the more of it afterwards. On the Devolver Direct. It's uh. time for our next game announcement. Cool. Study the past if you would define the future. All oh, are architects of fate. Working in these walls of time. Let us all for death prepare. Civilization? Last great it feels like it's prepare. civilization. Seven? Way they're going through history. Civilization and seven? Civ seven? seven? And without a mm. Or maybe it's with DLC, I don't know. But let me first do some great thing that shall be told among men hereafter. Each of us shall endure. This that only is a Civ game. That's what it's, that's what it's appearing. I'm getting Civ game by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do like the trailer. I like how it's been flowing. And the whole way at the end, it shows one gigantic interlocking art piece. Yeah, I know, right? You know. So be 
so it shall be. Sid, yeah, Sid. Yes, Civilization 7! Yeah. Wow, I called it! Good call, man, good call. This felt like it full on. Oh, Hello, dude. everyone. Oh. It's summer games. Hey, Sid, myself. On behalf of the Firaxis team, we are thrilled to finally announce that Civilization 7 is coming day and date to PC and consoles next year. Oh, okay, cool. I'm in awe of the amazing team that has brought us to this moment. But we also have to thank you, our incredible fans around the world, for your overwhelming support of this franchise for over 30 years. We can't wait to share more, all feel old, and we yeah. hope you'll join us yeah, right? for the full reveal <laughs> oh, of I'm sorry, Civilization I, cer I certainly do. In the meantime, stay civilized. Stay civilized. Sister, because I saw it, I'm like, what's one game where- Ooh, nice. Black Myth! It's Black Myth Wukong. Yes! Black Myth. Yes! Oh, yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Ooh. Yeah, I, I fish really well. It's obvious, so. And now you have a PS5. I know. Shut up. <laughs> Is this sad part? Tiny Bar means hoping for a Toriyama reference in this oh, game? That would be awesome. It's a tiny Toriyama reference. Mm -hmm. Or even Easter eggs within the game itself. That'd be awesome. That's one place oh, that's cool. cool. That's one place it is. Oh! Holy shit. I mean, this is fine, considering, yeah, we already know the release yeah. date, so it's fine, because we've seen plenty of the it's gameplay. Yeah, we've seen plenty of this game. Is there anything else? Oh, oh yeah, the Lux edition. Could we, a, oh, one to one scale. Collectors, oh, the statue, man. That's a nice statue. That's man. gorgeous. Nice. And a digital standard edition. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a video game. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a video game. No, for Civilization. Oh, nice question. Is this Atlas Rising? It's a commercial. Yeah. Um, the one game I, want, I still want to get, <laughs> even though for the X, I'll play it pretty much, like it's said for. The, the meta quest pretty much is the Batman game, so I don't mind doing that. Okay, you can dust off my meta quest. Yeah, I'll now, uh, <laughs> no, when I saw the Civilization 7, I'm like, you know what we haven't seen in a while? Civilization. Nation. There we go. We've yeah. seen everybody else do the Civ thing except for Civ. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went Civ 7. Humans were fated we, we've been watching everyone copy their homework. <laughs> Reaching heaven and returning with a gift. Stardust. But mankind was given more than it wished for. Not progress, but chaos. Every new height brings a terrible fall. And yet hope still glimmers, even in the depths of the unknown, like new flies. We die to live again. The smallest creatures show the greatest resilience. Wherever we remain standing, we stand. Once human. July, July 9th. 9th. Damn, that's right. Damn, that's Steam. literally right around the corner, right there. Steamed it. Again, uh, oh, oh, the commercial. That was interesting. Yeah. July 9th. That sucks that Lego Horizon thing got spoiled for me earlier. Like, apparently a screenshot got leaked to me. We got our reaction at least on that one, especially for me. That is pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty dope. Quidditch games don't play. I don't even. I never even played the original Quidditch game. The game. Oh, look games. Any of you faced tyrannids before? Warhammer, Space Marine Two. Eric, they're still they're still writing that. He's supposed to do the movie for it. He's a huge. He loves Warhammer. Now, I am aware. Cool. I love that. Yeah! I'm like, have you seen this game already? 
All right, welcome back to Summer Game Fest. Uh, we've got some amazing developer guests joining us throughout the show, and I'm very excited to introduce our first guests. They are legendary creators who are working on a brand new fantasy RPG metaphor slated to launch this October. Metaphor. Please welcome the director and art designer of Persona 3, 4, and Oh, metaphor. Five, Katsura Hashino. Wow. Sojima. Persona devs. The, it's, the, it's metaphor de fantasio. But I, I can understand why he just said metaphor. Or it is calling it metaphor. Metaphor. There you go. Uh, re, re fantasio. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It is a pleasure to be here. My name is Hashino, and I am the director of Metaphor. It is a pleasure to be here with Mr. Soejima. Can you really show that name? Archetype to you, Hokano game with you to call on Joe this name. So no silly tiny shrink or that's a henshin state. Oh, oh Samurai class. RPG this. Definitely this true. game is an RPG in which the party members transform into their jobs, which we call archetypes. Gunner. These archetypes allow you to fight Flaric. against your enemies. Yeah, well, apparently the whole basis premise, Richard, is like, it's a tournament to crown a new king. Mm. So the grand tournament to the crown a new king. Archetypes are the embodiment of power born from the will to face your fears and anxieties. We gave it our all to instill each and every archetype dark with dream. a feeling of uniqueness in each of their designs. Dragoon, in oh, total, fuck. there will be more than 40 types of archetypes available in the oh, game. Wow. Yeah, because that's, that's why I keep saying the number, like evolve, which number they some are. Some of them can evolve into stronger versions. あの、メタファーはあの、新たなアルピジ。我々が作ってきたアルピジのノウハウを全てあの、結集させて作っています。とても大きなボリュームのゲームです。あの、今日はあの、このアーキタイプをテーマにした最新のトレーラーをお持
driving this city mad. Oh, we got the guy from Arkham Origins. Yeah, he voices Chris Redfield. Mm -hmm. Roger Craig Smith. from the fire in the streets, casting shadows of rats on everything that was rat once good. So wait, rat catcher? Why isn't it just rat catcher? I think they're get oh, we got scary guys. Oh, well, let's have Chris Redfield. But they're not the only ones who can use it around. I think he's changed, he's changed his name to Rat King. Oh, oh, oh. The Rat King it's Smashing Pumpkin. Yeah! Right in a cage. I don't know that cage. I'm about to be strong. It's the Rat in a Cage. Only on Meta Quest 3! No. Which I don't have! Oh, God damn you! Official gameplay chart. Oh, we gotta wait till August! For gameplay. MetaQuest 3, fuck you, MetaQuest 3. The band falls, the rats rise. The rats. Interesting. Okay. MetaQuest 3. It's cool that they got some, the guy who I'm also voiced Batman in the Arkham the games, the, the return. Now, it is time to update fans on a legendary fighting game franchise. Update. And that includes me. Because I have been a fan of this series ever since one of its first iteration and have been playing each one ever since. Tekken? So, let's check it out. Update. Tekken, Street Fighter, King of Fighters. Yeah, Street Fighter. Yeah. Okay, Street Fighter 6. Oh! The first new character of Season 2! Yeah. Is it? Oh, I think it's Cody! No! It's Tekken! Oh shit! Oh, yeah. It's Terry! Yeah, it's Terry! Terry! Oh shit! What? What? Not just Terry. Not just Terry. No! Wait! No, is this? Hi. No, Richard! Is this what I think it is? Shh, Chris. Or is more. this? There's oh. more. No, this is, I think this is the season two pass. Elena. Yeah, Elena. This is the season two pass. Street Fighter. Sick. Uh, oh wait, TV, TV. <gasps> oh, it's Sagat! <coughs> no, no, I don't think that's Sagat. I think that's Sagat or no. oh. oh, Bison! You're right, it's Bison! Oh shit! No! Bison's back! He's back. Wow! Wow! What? 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 You, know, you know Max is flipping the fuck out there. <laughs> You're acting like drag. Drag him into your location. <coughs> this guy's rebelled. Ooh. I like the, the design. I thought it was Cody at first because of the blonde hair, but then he put on the coat and I'm like, oh fuck, tears. There's a metal. I don't know if that's the title of the game or the title of the dev company. What about the... I'm gonna guess the game. Ooh. I like the design. It's different. Let me see. See more later. Yeah, I like the art style they're going with this. This is cool. So was that four they confirmed for the season two pass? Yes. That was four. four. Okay. That's or, interesting because okay, last ter Terry and I from King of Fighters Fatal Fury and Elena back from the Street Fighter Alpha series and M. Bison Return. Also she was in Street Fighter It's DLC, but she was in Street Fighter 5 technically. Yeah. Um oh, that's that interesting. Cool. Last. Yeah. Roguelike co-op. Hack and, and Slash, Tears of Metal. Okay, it's called Tears of Metal. That looks pretty dope. I like the art style. It's pretty definitely out there. What is it? Co-op? Wishlisted now for Steam. Okay. Yeah. Roguelike. Roguelike co-op. Hack and Slash. Hack and Slash. Oh! Sparky we'll Zero Trail. Yeah. Yes! They keep on unveiling more characters. They Like, their last turn was Fusions. Mm -hmm. oh, they're Cell. Supposed to be unveiling by new. 
sorry, it's a lot of Oh, I think it's a. Oh, it's a look at the story mode fights. Yeah. This is like a story mode trailer. Yeah, it's story mode. Yeah, he's like, there you go. <laughs> you guys now show now. Of Delta Force Hot Ops, a free-to-play tactical shooter available to play on all platforms. Here's a look at their multiplayer FPS extraction mode. Extraction mode. Because no, I for, for, for uh, uh, I mean for um, Street Fighter thing. I don't see yet. They're gonna have CDS at first. I'm like, no. Just waiting. We have a core in Alsara It's time to take action. Objection. Elect and decode the map located at the tourist center at the southeast. We need to utilize terrain for so Chris, we can execute swiftly and silently. We're in position now. Objection. 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 Oh shit. <laughs> Most terrorists in this game you need to do that. It's like 2025. The match is <laughs> all the game's premium campaign mode. Black Hawk Down is a reimagining of the original game that is also fully licensed to recreate moments from the award-winning Ridley Scott movie. Oh wow! Here, read the book. Is your world premiere first look at that gameplay. Oh shit! I want to fuck recreating from Black Hawk movie. I actually read the book. No, I actually did for like. Pretty good book. Delta Force Black Hawk. Yeah. Why are they burning tires? RPG! Hold on! Follow oh, a unit prepared for landing. One foot. Good. Secure and capture a team in your cabinet. Over. Get down! Get down! And now, I have an update for you on Fatal Fury, City of the Wolf. Oh, yeah! Have you seen this for game, Richard? It's, it's a it's actual sequel to Fatal Fury, but watch how visually impressive this looks. God damn, that looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, damn, that's God damn, you weren't kidding. <laughs> Dude, and for the first time in this series, full English dub voice cast, too. Legend of the Past. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, B okay, cool. New character, Vision A. Fox nice. Reaper. Modern. Oh, 
Yeah, it has more of that comic book style you she saw in NBC3. Mm -hmm. That's where they give it in. Oh, oh, the oh minigames too! Early 2020. Yeah, we already knew that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, full, like the guy voicing, like, I think Rock Howard, like, did Genki's voice for the Spider Man games. Mm -hmm. And, like, what was it? The one they got for the Blue Hair Ninja ch chick is the one voices, um. Uh, Yuffie in the Final Fantasy remake game, seven remake games. Hmm. Yeah, you hear her. There you go. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's, that's Yuffie. Yeah, yeah. It's like it looks like she's been typecast. <laughs> yeah, and they all have even have like secret ultimates. Like for example, Terry's is one he does in the Fatal Fury uh, film, hmm. cool. and Rocks is Power Geyser. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he even has a line saying, "This one's for you, Terry." And you just see him yell, power? Guys, playing a very different game up to that moment. I know, right? Ah, oh, there it is. There it goes. Cool. We got an isometric, like, competitive pocket slash game? Mm -hmm. Lops, I get it. That's clever. <laughs> Cyclops. Did that say Aries? Yes. But Sorry, the bottom left. I can't see the bottom left. The, the, little, girl, the little girl one is Poseidon. Uh, it's based on the guy, yeah. Battle, Battle Crush. Crush. June 27th. It's based on like the. Yeah, the guy <laughs> on the Greek Pantheon for yeah. the rest of it. Uh, oh, Gundam. Heavy stuff. Is it Gundam or. Um. No, these don't look like Gundams. It looks like something. Meant really? No, no, that's no, Kojima. No, 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 no. That's Kojima. Lumine, light support. I, I'm gonna say, guys, these look a lot like the Xenogear Xenosaga models right here. I mean, like, yeah. uh, they they said two that's, big names at the beginning of this. I yeah, missed yeah, the mode. Uh, Mecha based combat. Oh wait, I think we've seen this game before at Game Awards. It's like one of many things we saw there. But they showed this so. at Game Wars. It was the last place they showed it. Like, hopefully they showed a name. August 2024 closed beta. Makeup break, Make yeah. Break. yeah! Yeah, yeah, they yeah, showed this at Game Awards. We're back here at Summer Game Fest, and that was a look at Mecha Break with its immersive aerial and ground combat with lightning fast maneuvers. Next, Jason Blum and his Blumhouse banner have become synonymous with incredible Blumhouse. horror films over the years, like Get Out, Megan, and last year's Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, now Blumhouse is entering the video game world Shit. in a big way. Okay, what are you bring? To do the production, Megan. Our good title, our good All movies, films, yeah. our good movies. <laughs> Avatar is a waitress. Wait, Price will be here at all. Theater of Pirates. Idols. Yeah, it says it right there at the bottom left. Yeah, it said that. Whoa! Oh, wait. I don't know what I'm going to put here. Three seasons from Perfect Cabbage. I cannot so, backing up multiple studios. We're backing up multiple studios. I must not sleep. Yeah. Sleep away from I am terrified to sleep. And I am scared like multi -game death type of thing to stay showing. awake. Don't worry, Boo. If any ghosts actually show up, I'll protect you. Fear is spotlight. Save me? I'll save you. 
no matter what. Just go home, Lily. The local police department asked me to help with the case. Why would they need a game designer? Oh shit, simulation. simulation. Should Play have some lane. developer mode. Yeah. Like the Lone in the Dark Ride. From the Visionary Minds of Sam Barlow and Brandon Cronenberg. Cronenberg! Oh, Project, Project C. C. The future was meant to be blue. Yeah. Cronenberg. That's a Cron uh, David Cronenberg's yeah. son. Mm -hmm. Who did that one uh, where they jump, mind jump into like people to assassinate somebody else? Oh yeah. Okay, I like that. So it's like we're seeing the different ideas they're getting, and then they're working with other studios, pretty much. Yeah, look at all the studios down below. Yeah, I, I, don't worry, first I just put Bloom House Games line up. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the lineup of their games and the oh. different studios they're working with. Okay, I like, I like that. that. Please welcome Jason Blum, CEO and founder of Bloom House, ah. and Luis Blaine, creative lead at Bloom House Games. They're getting the creative like stories that you get so something that they would do. So is it Blum or Bloom? I would I say, think it Bloom says, I say say Bloom, but I guess it's Bloom House. Hey guys, we got ourselves a full slate there. That's incredible. So, so Jason, tell us a bit about uh, why did you want to get into games like this? What are we doing? Well, we've been uh, very, very busy. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys all. Great to hear uh, the fans Name out there. Name matches what I'm looking for. Uh, right all right. You'll, you'll all be very happy to know we're working at this very minute on the sequel of Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, it's they coming. Are. We, yeah, yeah, they are oh, in there. said that already. Anyway, horror is, uh, to my great relief, getting more and more popular. Our movies are working. It's working on streaming. It's working in live events. And we wanted to try and take our approach to movies and apply it to games. And that's what you see here. We're going to do independent games. We're going to look for creators and give them a platform and, and encourage like these that. creators to be weird and subversive and find the most effed up, scariest thing they <laughs> yeah. can. You can say fuck. Them into you really can say fuck. Cool you can say fuck, right? <laughs> Yeah, watch, I'll say it right now. Fuck, 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 fuck. Fuck, 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 our horror games are a lot like Blumhouse movies. They come in many different flavors of fear. She's wearing which a shirt that says Final Girl. For yeah. So maybe you're a <laughs> That's <fan> cool. Of <laughs> nostalgic. That's funny. She thinks she'd actually be survived a whole horror movie. No. Intense first person shooters. Or maybe, Jeff, you just want some bonus murder and you're otherwise very bonus close murder. to performing sim. I think, you know, we as horror fans, we know that there are so many different subgenres to explore and our independent development partners, they feel the same and they're just as excited, which means we've got psychological nightmares, we have supernatural scares, we have cosmic horror and our team has worked really hard cosmic to horror. work with global, creative, talented partners and that means for us that we really want to as we're working in indie projects, yeah. which means that we can take well, risks, you, you know, we can be flexible, and really we can push the limits of what's possible in scary storytelling, and we're so excited. Yeah, no, it, it looks looks awesome, all the stuff you have there, and I know, you know, we'll get into when games are coming out, but some of these are coming soon, Jason, right? We got a good slate. Well, yeah, we're on, uh, we're on PC and console, and, um, and uh, yeah, we wanted to start with uh, with not just one, but we wanted to start with a few games. So, uh, so you want to you want to tell us about those? Yeah. So, Fear the Spotlight is our first release coming later this year, and it really hits our mission statement. It's an amazing '90s horror experience. It's got great characters, a compelling narrative. It's also super creepy, and I think people. Can <laughs> it's it's super super I love that you say that. It's also super and creepy. Quickly, actually, Fear the Spotlight is getting its first trailer as part of the Day of the Dev showcase. So stay tuned. After. Oh, okay. So after the day of the Dev. I know this is just the start, so we'll probably be seeing you in future years with more from uh, Blumhouse Games. But guys, what do you think of the slate? Pretty amazing, right? Yeah, they're, they're applying what they usually do in the movies. They're, they're, playing the they're finding games that fit the Blumhouse formula. Yeah, yeah. formula yeah. Video. Store for creative yeah. storytelling, especially creepy. Power Rangers game with a retro feel. With a retro feel? Wait, 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 wait shush! Oh, okay, okay, never mind. mind. Oh, no, wait, wait. no clips! Just let, me, let me watch, okay? Ooh, ooh. Fuck the all-new action game. Oh shit! Yes! What the hell am I looking at? 
Tommy Rita. That was Robo Rita from the yeah. from the Once and Always special. Oh, we. Here's me, I know. Okay, the gameplay I'm liking. The, the cut animation. The cutscenes, not so much. Ooh, whoa. Oh, okay, that's okay, pretty you know. Whoa. Okay. You, you got, whoa. Motorcycle, damn. Digital clip. Digital clips I've heard is, is good. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit, yeah, the Zords, there we go. My own from Power. Rita's, Rita's Rewind. Ah, uh, uh, you bastards. Okay. I'm, I'm a little upset that I only saw the Steam logo there. It's like, you guys are going to make me buy a Steam Deck, goddammit. I don't have money for a Steam Deck. It's on Steam, dude. It's on PC. Oh, don't look away. From Lifeline Game Studio. Oh god, no. No. It's no. like, no. Ow. Ow. I'm out. No, no. The I feels. Don't. The feels. No, no. He doesn't want the feels. Oh god damn it. Don't make me know about this game. You're about to find out about this game. Jesus Christ, it's just like fucking never. Yeah. Grows up with you. Ooh. Evil demon warthog after you? Whoa. Whoa. So wait, just deep deep and deep oh, deer, deer and boy. boy. Deep and boy. Deer and boy. Right so now. wait, it's never what except with a game, boy, and boy and a deer instead. Jason Houdet in Paris, who started that project alone in 2020 wow. during the pandemic, and now has a team of eight helping him oh, wow. realize his vision with financial aid from the French government and games oh, like that. Oh wow! The show giving wow, the French government is supporting him too. Yeah. All right, next after a long wait, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is yep. arriving later this year. Well, this I'm pretty sure they don't want to be only known for action RPG. Talk. From War mm -hmm. Studios, here is a brand new look. Yeah, I heard the first one was actually pretty well received for this. The best laid plans of men don't always come to fruition. <laughs> deer, oh boy, I'm sorry, like that way. It's Man never, poses. except with a boy and a deer. But God disposes. <laughs> And now I remember the game was a while. Yeah, 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 the first game was very well received. Two yeah. young fellas did the realism they added to it. One's a smart ass smith. I love that smart ass. You have me when you say stuff like that. You behave like a spoiled brat. How dare you speak? Ow. <laughs> I love the music just cut out on that bit. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah. There are many sinners in this world. Also, Kingdom Come Delivery Boy, that's basically Okay! It. In the end, we all face your judgment for what we should have done, but lacked the courage to do. The last time I ran away, I lost everything. I'm never gonna run from that fucker again. Kiss! Our! Us! <laughs> This retribution for my sins. Yeah, look at this. You know what? I'm in. I'm in on just the story. You know what everyone's gonna be basically saying on over that line. They're all gonna yeah. be, they're all gonna be doing Monty Python quotes. Yeah. I'm not in your general direction. <laughs> yeah. Come on. You are a fart face. <laughs> what did you call me? Fart face. Your <laughs> face is made of farts. <laughs> Come. You know what? I had never played the first one. I like this one. I love this story. A little bit humor in this one. A little bit more humor in uh, uh, this one. I like that. Next, we step into the dark mind of Silent Hill creator Keiichiro Toyama. 
Uh, back in 2021, we announced his new game, Slitterhead, at the Game Awards. Slitter. Now, we're giving you a look at the gameplay from his independent, Tokyo-based studio. I guess when we read out Silent Hill, was like, oh, it's from the Silent Hill creator. Yeah, one of the... Yeah, one of the original... You know, part of the original Team Silent working on this? It's like, you know... Okay, that literally looks like the guy from Evil Within. Yeah, it does. It, it, is it the guy from Evil Within? Because it looks dead all like him. Like him no, he's, he just has the same fashion sense. Yeah. No, I'm talking about his face. Fashion sense, yeah. Maybe, maybe he was copying something. He's not the same guy, but he's definitely. But um. What, what the code? fuck? Definitely copying off of some. Whoa. Definitely copying Shinji Mikami's homework. You're considering he's with body. Okay. This is interesting. Oh. 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 No. You got a little something right there. Now you see, if you keep picking at it, it's not going to get better. I know, right? So wait, are you- That one looked like it came out of fucking Beetlejuice. <laughs> so you're just possessing other people cool. and fighting the, the demon. The demon, it's like you're possessing each person just to try to figure out or find out what's going on. And trying to stop them. What the fuck? Yeah, look, look, it's yeah. definitely a bit framey. Yeah. Carrying of a shotgun. Okay. Yeah. It's a very interesting concept for a light. Basically, yeah, you're a parasite taking over other people and, you, and using your special abilities through them. Through them. God damn. Is that a like bloody bony gatling? Gun? Oh, that, okay, I admit that was pretty dope. Yeah. And and no, that wasn't a shotgun. That was like a bone sword, I guess you could say. Kind of like just that. Guy, just the motorcycle guy oh, also has a shotgun. Kind of like Whoa. Whoa. Okay. you can take over the dog. Okay. Oh, yeah. I spelled it wrong, but November eighth. What the? F Looking motherfuckers. Potatoes or the chicken McNuggets from the Yeah, it's gonna look like more of the chicken McNugget characters. From from the old McDonald's. That's movie. what I call a dramatic entrance. There's a reason why I'm called Killer Bean. It's oh, because bean. I'm good at what I do. Oh shit. Really? He just shot a bullet and shot reflected that. He yeah. shot and ricocheted a bullet so that it hit somebody in the corner. Good. <laughs> No, oh, the what the fuck, fuck is this? I used to be an assassin for the Shadow Agency. What the fuck? An international organization this, powerful enough to shake the this world. This does not seem like it's real. This I'm seems more like it's some kind of parody to announce something kill. else. This feels like now, find out more at the Volver <laughs> Direct kind of game. <laughs> You're the cast iron idiot who wants to take down the Shadow Agency. <laughs> Well, it is sure nice to meet you. Before you die. What the fuck? I don't. Well, oh, because there's so much different stuff in here. I'm like, trying to we just up. saw a game where great game where they are using blood and gallons and bones, and this is the weirdest. This is the weirder trailer. I don't I'm telling know. Tell me, somebody what... looked at. It's okay, I like the, the, the idea of the game, but they what's the style? And they saw the Chicken Bean Nugget character going, that's it. Killer Bean. Uh, okay? They literally looked like the Chicken Bean Nuggets, like, like you said, Richard. Why'd you like you that know? one? That was Killer Bean, a third-person roguelike shooter made by another single developer. Single Blue developer. Blue developer. Oh, okay. Here in Los Angeles, Jeff Liu, who previously worked as an animator on movies like The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So though. fun. It's amazing <laughs> to in this industry. All right, to introduce their brand new game, please welcome from the Game Bakers, a small independent studio in Montpellier, France, Audrey Le Prince and Emmerich Taw. How is that the weirder trailer? Hello, Jeff, everyone. To Slitterhead. I'm very happy to be here. 
when we created our studio, Emmerich and I, we promised each other to always... Because before we saw Slitterhead, we were given the context that it so was like the dude who created Fury Silent Hill. And yeah, Haven, that's why. <laughs> we had to introduce a new game. We were Care, expecting weird. A survival climber. Survival climber? When I was climber? a teenager, uh, my dad prepared Games an called the game to Mark K2, but half of his team didn't come back. And I've always wondered, why do alpinists risk their lives and in such extreme conditions? Oh. This is something we wanted to explore uh, in Cairn. And Cairn is a game about what it takes to go beyond your limits. You climb a mountain to reach a summit never reached before. In Bakers, okay, that's The climbing gameplay is a challenge. <sighs> it's very intense and realistic. It's a face-off between you and the mountain. And what you're going to see in the trailer is not from cutscenes. It's the actual climbing gameplay. It's a climbing survival. You can see more later today during Day of the Devs, but now let's have a look. Interesting. The game bakers. Oh. Climbing survival. Oh no, I'm out. Hey, hey, hey let's out. take all the let's take all the climbing gameplay from. Let's see here. Is it like that one weird benefiti one where you can show each limb? Limb. That's what it feels like. Where it's like it's up to you to you know to find the right crevice or you know. Oh. They're French, can. Can. Thank you. Interesting. Ooh, we get a which, burner. which, if I remember correctly, can is the French word for mountain. So. Oh! There's this thing. Saving like peril. And the beginner's guide. I'm a fighter. I'm meant to be in the arena, in combat. But instead, I'm out here in the middle of the woods, running a tea shop. So, what does running a tea shop involve? Well, there's a lot of gardening, and I've had to get used to the pretty unique tea machine they've got here. <laughs> None of these tasks are all that hard, they just take patience. And I'm not really the patient type, but I'm surviving. Of course, I have to actually serve the tea to our customers. And once that's... How does that work? I'll usually yeah. check in with Boro, the guy who owns the shop. Oh, you See ever seen those old Dark Souls memes of, like, the dudes in the armor just... And when all the chores are done, dunking Sunny D down their helmets through the face plates, it's like and do basically like that. Nothing. It's not fighting, but it's peaceful. And what's weird is that I actually feel good. I'm happy. I can stop running now. I can stop. I can stop. I can stop running. This is good for me. Yeah, where's the, the yeah, Stanley Parable? Where's the where's the yeah, other dark, side? Where's the dark side? The other part of it. Oh. oh okay. There's another half of her. Wander stop. Okay. Interesting. 2024 PS5 and Steam. That was Wonderstop, the announcement of the next game from Davey Redden, the creator of the Stanley Parable. I sense there's a twist coming in with respect to Yeah, it is a twist. To not wait to play that. All right, now here's a look at the story trailer for Unknown Nine Awakening, a narrative Ooh, action yeah, game that tells one. the story of Aruna, a young woman born with the ability to venture into the fold, the dimension that overlaps our own. Hey, but what's cool is during the game, you can actually jump into other people and use their I'm abilities. Inward and focus on your shade. 
Do you feel it? I do. Oh, by the way, we're an hour or two. progress is impressive lately, Irina. I know. These are incredible. They call themselves the Sahin. There is a whole grand series of across different, like, media. The Unknown Nine. Does well, this have anything to, to do with why things in here? I've noticed. Humanity has lived for eons at the mercy of the Nine. It's time we took control of our own destiny. My destiny. Indian type of hero. Why are you so insolvent? Yeah. You killed someone I loved. Remember stepping. Find your target Ooh. and reach the gap. You don't belong here. You're wrong. This is exactly where I'm meant to I be. I like it. Like Indian female protagonist. I love it too. What style? Fold is a strange place. It's found something down there. Sasha. Yeah, I'm no knowledge. What are you going for? PS5, PS4, Xbox. Hey! How about we see the world together? No, I'm good, fam. We have something. Yeah, I'm also hunting stories. Coming soon. Oh, still your heart. Oh, Judas is coming soon. Yeah, I'm also hunting stories. Coming soon. Oh, still your heart. June 14. Great. I don't feel so I'm not going to write that down. That I know it's a commercial. For Capcom shit. Save for the Monster on Rise, that's actually not a bad deal. Monster on World. Or Roth. I fall. his mask look at that and he wears it but notice how now he's changed into the actual guy and and a trio the last, last song. song demo available now Free. September 19th is when it releases all right we're back here live for more summer game fest the first descendant Powered by Unreal Engine 5, this is a next-gen with, uh, looter shooter with dynamic mm -hmm. cooperative gameplay, including a grappling hook mechanic. It is finally set for release, and we're very happy here to debut the new trailer and the
July 2nd. Oh, bam. Right around the corner. That's so much. That looks awesome. The first Descendant will be available across PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. Wishlist it now and prepare for the release on July 2nd. And now, please welcome two developers whose hit indie game, Among Us, took the world by storm the in the anime game show. Uh, I'm pretty sure I recognize that. <laughs> From that Inner like Slot, right here shoulder. are Victoria Tran I'm pretty sure that's Steve Sale of the Blind Gamer. Mario loves watching, loves watching his videos, too. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe they just let us be on this stage? Like, no chaperones. Like, I know. Can we announce something totally fake? Oh, you you like, think they'll let us do that? Totally Among fake. Us two? Among Us three? Four? No. 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 Oh, all right. well, they were doing Among Us two in the first game. They were going for like, eh, yeah, no, that's okay. all today. Uh, there's been so many great indie games in recent years, but it's also been no, sec no secret that it's kind of a rough time in the industry. Some devs don't really get the chance they deserve, so we thought we could help out a little bit. That's why we're excited to announce our side project, Outer Sloth, an indie game fund oh. we made that offers the kind of deals we would have wanted back in our less popular Among Ye days. Among Ye days! It's a way of saying thank you to our crewmates, That's players, cool. peers, by helping some games and devs have the funding and freedom needed to oh, shift smart move. Yeah. Take what they earn from the popular Among Us, turn into like something to help out the I, rest of the community. Really into a mutual yeah. fund. Yeah. Paying it forward in a way. Yeah. Outer Sloth is our passion project and dream for a better, more sustainable industry. We are really excited <laughs> and incredibly, incredibly nervous <laughs> to reveal it here and show you mm -hmm. the current lineup of games we've managed to fund because of you. And don't worry, Jeff. It has your favorite, a ton of world premieres. Enjoy! <laughs> Another games lineup. I mean, among us. We made our indie game successful. Thanks. Is <laughs> 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 this, this to fun art? So, so, uh. We're doing it! it. It's like team we put in charge for every story. Here are games! Games! Can you may already be playing our first game? Oh, I heard about this one, yeah! Basically create unique machines that create a studios, creators of Battle Chef Brigade, and this is our card battle, battle suit aces. Aces. Battle suit aces. We are Studio NE Percent, and we're making the Marsfield Archives oh. a game about building and exploring connections. Hi, we're Midnight Munches. We just released the demo for one button bosses. Our boss rush game Big in with a single button to press and a ton of bosses to beat. One button, that's all it takes. Game director of Hustcross, and this is Rogue Eclipse, our epic spaceflight action roguelike, where you will have to customize and master your Starfighter, take on merciless armadas, and vanquish a fleet of colossal super destroyers. Shit. And we do have one more game that's very early in development. Well, I'm okay. um, Pekka, creative director of Outer Loop Games, makers of Thirsty Suitors. Oh, Thirsty Suitors! In our oh. new game, explore the world in an upgradable mech and cook up tasty dishes for local communities. Oh. Fight off corpos, discover new Dosa recipes, and reunite with your strange loved ones. Cooking RPG, pretty dope. Project Dosa is a game about life, death, love, and food for the soul. Food for the soul. Help make this. Help make games. You are the best. That's cool. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, Victoria and Forrest. Those all look fantastic and I cannot wait to play them. But all of those amazing indie games aren't the only thing coming out of Inner Sloth. Did you know that there's going to be an Among Us TV show? Yep. Yep. <laughs> sounds like he did. Yes. Yeah, sounds like he did. In <laughs> For those of you review. Check out this sneak peek. Ooh, okay. Inner Sloth production. I still got you to do an anime show this, but sure. Well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Captain. The waiver form. Wait, why do you go to Wayne Van? Hmm. So, yeah, if this is like a voiceless animated short series, I'm in. I'm in. This is so cool so far. We're not That's dead. The survivors. About to be. Oh, oh wait, they are. Holy shit, what a cast. Randall Park, Grant Dan Stevens. Wayne Knight, like, 
shit. Pat Oswalt. Up next, we have Sonic X Shadow Generations. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I love this shit! The greatest hit collection of 3D and 2D levels from Sonic <laughs> It's a remaster of now Sonic Generations, but they've now added a Shadow a campaign. Gameplay from a standalone mm. campaign. As I've well seen as. AKA, they took the Shadow of the Hedgehog mod that the. Ooh, at least they. Oh, sorry. Well, oh, they they took the Shadow of the Hedgehog mod that the community already made and they just made it part of the game. More, a new tra yeah, more action, more new, tra new trailer. Like you say, it's, like it's yeah, it's an HD remaster Sonic Generations, but they've added a uh, uh, Shadow the Hedgehog campaign. Hence the name. And recommend not to Google search this. Well, the Google search Sonic X Shadow. Three hedgehogs. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. no, they're just showing that. Okay, uh, thank you guys. I, 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 my biggest criticism of the game is I will only, only love half of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That video looked like Sonic 06 stuff. Well, yeah, there is Sonic 06 stuff in there. For the Shadow campaign, there has to be because, you know. I can't wait to hear on piano though in, uh. <laughs> <laughs> October 25th. Oh yeah, I heard about that. Look at that. Yeah, the the Adventure Legacy skin. Sam. <laughs> the the Year of Shadow, right? A movie coming in December. Yeah, too. movie. Yeah. Like stuff. All right. In Wait, the upcoming like online himself. survival game Dune Awakening from Funcom, uh, there is uh, one uh, small decision that unleashed a chain of events which set the stage for the story the player will experience. Let's find out for the first time what that is. Oh god, don't. I don't I don't know the The only piece I find is a uh, future yeah. that never happened. Is it kind of a weird survival animal for me? Paul yeah. Atreides was never born. What? I created the future. Until it created me. This is a what if scenario? Yeah. Out of it. But I see a narrow way. The path that might have been. It doesn't sound like a good way. What if my mother had obeyed her orders and given birth to a girl? Yeah, that's what it sounds Everything like. Everything yeah. would change. I mean, they were showing there was that, like that timeline thing, and then like the they went this way and split the other way. So. A world where my father lives. Yeah. House Atreides surviving the Battle of Arakeen. Sardaukar deployed to protect the Spice Melange. A war of assassins spreading across the planet. Fremen. Exterminated. Oh. No, Muad'Dib. No, Lizan al -Gaib. No, Kwisatz Haderach. All of my visions lead to horror. Except for this one. This one leads to you. Interesting. So it's a what if story. Like what if thing, these things actually happened? Or oh, that's what it is. Open world survival MMO. That's what it is. More Dune Awakening coming at Gamescom ONL in August. Now it is time to see the announcement of another new game from a brand new development studio. Cool. I'm trying to guess what this is. A space tank shooter? Weird. The texture is weird on that. The peanut butter bar? Hmm. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's probably just me. No, no, I don't even know. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Bad 
Battle Aces. aces. Mm. I have no idea what that is. Uh, tell us more about Battle Aces and show you the gameplay. Here's David Kim from Uncapped Kings. Cool. Thanks, Jeff. So Battle Aces is please? the RTS game Thank for you. everyone. It's for gold players that are gold. brand new to RTS as well as RTS veterans. We really Did want to bring the core fun of RTS to everybody. I don't like it. how games such as World of it's, Warcraft it's, it's or MMOs or Hearthstone oh, games. Oh, it's an MMO. Oh, it's so oh, like an no, no, RTS. RTS. Action-packed army versus army game that has a high emphasis on the strategy. We it's, want to bring it's a seltzer, this type of very specific RTS and I'm not a big fan of players seltzer. in two major ways. First. We want to amplify both the in and out of game strategizing through unit decks. And what makes unit decks very cool is not only will players be able to define the exact way that they wish Thank to you. play, but also players will be able to experience an endless uh, possibility of strategies. Second, we want to You're eliminate terrible. the tedious place well, required to play in RTS uh, as right. much as possible yeah, yeah, so that players so playing this game are experiencing only okay. the fun parts of playing an RTS yeah. game. So, if you want to learn more about Battle Aces or if you want to sign up for our beta test that's coming up very soon, then please uh, make sure to yeah, visit our website and play Battle Aces. Yeah, it, has yeah, it, has it has electrolytes in it too. So. Thank you, David. That was fantastic. All right. Our next premiere unveils the exciting new destination for a game that Shadow dropped at the Game Awards last year, The Finals, with its unparalleled destruction mm -hmm. okay. wrapped in the world's most deadly game show. I heard it's actually now, pretty fun, but I'm like, yeah. Two seasons we're unveiling, where contestants will be going in the all-new season starting next week on June 13th. Oh, Sharp with your katanas, and welcome to season three of The Finals. Well, they've actually made it to three seasons of gameplay, so yeah. I've heard it's good, I've just not my kind of game, so. Yeah. They said it's not like, you know, they dive into every type of, um, era, but. <laughs> I like the random shit, they're all like, I got a knife! The fuck are we doing? That's how I got. <laughs> The chef guy, because they all got guns. Kyoto 1568. And he got a goddamn knife. It's like, I just got a butcher knife. That is it. You guys got guns. You load out his fucking World Tour Weekly Tournament. Thanks, I've heard it's really fun. I just. I still look at the chef guy like, I've got him now. Yeah, you notice he seems completely confident. You know, right? He's like he's just stroking that 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 Season knife like. Three, yeah, that's right. like okay, the fine. finals in Kyoto. It's All like, right, fine. Please welcome multiple Game Awards winner and a dazzling Game Awards performer, if I do say so myself, Sam Lake from Revenant. Oh, hey. Hey. oh. 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 Like wait, that. No, no, wait. Oh, it's yeah. not only two stuff. Okay. Oh, look at look at him. Look at him. Loving this shirt. Well, and, and basically, basically, guys, look at him. He, oh, look at him. <laughs> he he is Jeff Kelly's long lost not. brother. Thank Thank you. <laughs> Hi. You see, this is now the only way they let me come on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and tell you something exciting. News about Alan Wake 2. Many of you have been posting your Remedy Game collection pictures on your shelves with Alan Wake 2, so far, digital only. Oh, is that a, is this a physical release? Well, yeah, I think so. We are excited yeah. to announce physical deluxe edition. Yeah! Deluxe edition. Fuck it, I'll pay it! And physical collector's edition. And collector's edition. For Alan cool. Wake 2, coming this fall. You can lock in your copy starting tomorrow. Next. We promised you some expansion content for Alan Wake 2, yeah. right? I'm thrilled to introduce you all to Night Springs. <gasps> no! It contains three episodes with three familiar, fan-favorite, playable characters Playable. in mysterious, terrifying 
And like, I'm still pretty new to the, to the what Alan Wake fandom. Night Mario. Springs is basically twi is Twilight. I know, I know what Night Springs is. I know what that really is. I'm saying, I'm still a newbie, and the second I saw Night, Night Springs, I got excited because I'm like, <laughs> Night Springs will be playable. Wait. <laughs> in less than 24 hours. Oh! Talk about a shadow drop right there. Thank you. In now, less than 24 hours. With this world premiere, <laughs> I invite you to step into Night Spring. Spring. There you go. <laughs> there it goes. Night Springs. Hey. A special place, a shifting space. Existing in a countless number of parallel realities. Different every time we set upon the road that yeah. leads us there. And yet, always familiar to us. In nice way. Look at this, it's like, so let's see this, it's like, yeah. I'm a teacher. Please, my number one fan. You're the only Oh, that shit's the waitress from the first game. And we'll come back for you, my love. Oh, oh my god! god! Is that the guy from Quantum Break? I'm real. Yeah! This is gonna get... Oh, oh shit! Only one who could... Jesse's in it too! Very soul of literature. Three oh, of what the fuck? Okay, he said, for your three most favorite characters. <laughs> the waitress from Alan Wake 1, Jesse from Control, and the guy from Quantum Break. And the guy from Quantum Break. Well, I gotta... Wait, is that... That's a real shotgun? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 is that the never truly know how deep <coughs> Holy shit! June 8th! Literally! Within tomorrow! That's what he's like, within, is like in, with, uh, you know, within 24 hours. Wow! That's how you fucking do that! I like that, for three favorite characters. Physical, physical editions coming in the fall, and announce uh, DLC featuring three known Remedy characters. The waitress from the first game, though. What? Je oh no, I popped hard for Jesse. It's like I know that reference. I know what that is. And I played Quantum Break. I, I pretty much I know I know that character. That's why I saw him like no fucking way. Well, I called him Sean though, so I'm wondering, it's like, is he supposed to be Sean Ashmore, the actual actor? Like, because remember that was the game where they cut, uh, was in between, yeah, like and a shit ton of cutscene, uh, live action, action, action cutscene. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, I know about Quantum Break, guys. So I'm just saying, it's like, I'm just saying the fact that like Sam was there and called him Sean. It's like, it's like, so is it supposed to be actual Sean Ashmore, like kind of like the Nick Cage thing happening with Dead by Daylight, where he's just ending up in this shit? <laughs> That's right, New World New World Eternum will launch on PS5, Xbox Series X and S and PC on October 15th, and now you can play the game start to finish as a solo player or play co-op games across the world. I know, I know well. one easy ally. If you're watching guys, SGF on Twitter, I'll make an announcement right now. Comment right now. HSR in the chat to play these specials. Because that was a big you, you can hear that. Ah, ah. Top <laughs> game rewards. And speaking of Honkai Star Rail, Hoyoverse's latest space fantasy RPG just concluded its version 2.3 special program a few hours ago, but there's more. A sneak peek at the upcoming e expedition featuring a beloved character who is clearly ready for the forthcoming journey. Looks like Nancy saw the Power world. Rangers game trailer. Oh yeah, I bet she's excited too. It's like... Why do people choose to sleep? Because we need to? Because they're afraid to wake up from the dream. What? No, because I, I need a nap. I'm tired, I pulled four doubles back to back. Like, I have not slept in like three days! I worked two shifts, kiss my ass. <laughs> it's like, I worked two shifts in one day, kiss my ass. The past will disperse and fade away like bubbles in water. In the future, you don't want to face will never come. So is this, Hon she said it's Honkai Star Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, apparently they've yeah, already they, announced that. Like, yeah, this is like the next big update, I guess. Yeah, because, uh, what is it, their next one of uh, Zenless... Right, a reference right there, by the way. Okay. But, but I think they, uh, they already announced that, like, Zenless Zone Zero is coming out sometime, I believe, in July. I mean, you guess you can also call that a JoJo's reference, because, you know, that that's basically a stand. Why do people choose to slumber? Because in the end, we will wake from our dreams. 
Quit being metaphorical of sleep. People actually have <laughs> nine to five jobs. I know, right? I'm supposed to understand this reference, but I don't. Like that. Neat. I got nothing. You get this huh? solid thumb. That's a, you got it for me. Huh? <laughs> The Ultima Underworld games? Oh. Very interesting. Reminds me of like, I'm not gonna say Skyrim, but like. Oh, like I said, it's the Ultima Underworld games. Did he just throw a barrel? Yes. Yeah. I just laugh when they're attach attacking the the skeletons and there's blood coming out of the skeletons. I'm like, wait, what? That's <laughs> much he see it. It's like, wait, he's, he's supposed to bleed? Skeleton. A little bit. Chick from Alan. Oh, we went Chick from Alan Wake, maybe Sean Ashmore, and Jesse Faden. <laughs> it's like we each had a reaction to something that we actually knew. Is that the thing? I love, I, love, I love our middle one going, maybe Sean Ashmore? <laughs> <laughs> that was Sam Lake voicing Sam Lake in the game. And, dark, and, and, and he called him Sean, and that's not his yeah. character's name for Which I think is like they're, they're integrating the whole live they're action, but the still. Living Fantasy FPS Dungeon PvP VE Adventure Dark and Darker is now live. I think that was a few too many letters, Steam Jeff. Oh, it's FPS now live. Store today. So play it this weekend. All right. Lots of fans are joining us here in person at the YouTube Theater. We thank you for that. Ahead of the show, four lucky fans were upgraded well, to our VIP right? section thanks to the Discover Orange Ticket. Upgrade. That guy does not look happy to be here. VIP to be treated like one. All right, now here's the announcement of the release date. We're here for the YouTube Capcom theater. Upcoming Kunitsugami, half of the goddess. So I found out more about this game. It's basically if you, it's like Brutal Legend. Where remember how we loved the parts where you just hacking Sashi and Jack Black, but they added a strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that. Oh, okay. It's basically, yeah, you go around killing demons and shit and expelling them from the world. At the same time, you're you're recruiting members to your team to take care of these demons. But you're not directly controlling them. You're just giving them job classes and stuff like that. <laughs> Up with one of my video game news sites, so like I'm in March right now, and luckily that's where they had the Xbox partner preview thing. July 19th, okay. Interesting. Uh, I spelled that wrong, but whatever. Third of overgrowth. Okay, so we're not the only ones thinking this. That that was some very most recent Zelda game stuff, right? Yeah. Eh, kind of, with the open world aspect. That's why. That's why I look familiar. It's like, it looks familiar. Yeah, it's I heard those, yeah. Oh, no, friends. Oh. oh, yeah, Hyper Light Breaker. Yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the same universe Hyper Light Drifter, but it's a different. You play a different character. Okay. Yeah. Party animals. Hey! <laughs> 
Why he flooded in? <laughs> like that. Superpowers. Oh, superpowers. Rolling around at the speed of sound. I like the song. It goes with this. I'm the same one. Same one. <laughs> Bitch, get off my sled. Whoa! Uh, oh. Yeah. Is that a car race? Or? Yeah. So that's that. <coughs> Gloves off, party. <laughs> that's what it looks like. It's like more stuff to do in it. We know you may have heard the stories of oh, the fine people here at Amcor. So we wanted to take this time to dispel any of these completely unfounded rumors and allegations and reassure you that things here at Amcor and the city of San Amsterdam have never been bad. Things are going great here. We have absolutely nothing to hide from the citizens. Everybody here in this <laughs> this this town. <laughs> we think this town rules. Why would we hear a town that rules? I can't stop thinking about it. You got laid off. I think they all got laid off. That makes me sick. Yeah. That makes my whole family sick to their stomachs. My wife hasn't been on the toilet for weeks. What? <laughs> what you're saying about what M Corp's doing to this town? All those lies. Mm. Everyone in M Corp is really good. Stop crying, all right? This is business. Look around, pal. This is how businesses are run. Now you should have known that when you were hired on, okay? Jack, tissues, come on, pal. Bah! I don't know what I'm watching. Look <laughs> <laughs> this. That's it. That's a father Chris, and son. Chris, that's, that's your thumbnail. Him going, uh, no, not any time, but like, uh, like I don't know. Are not going anywhere. We'll be here a long time. Scandal free since night. <laughs> the power got shut off. Don't be panicking. Don't be He's running. I'm going to write M Corp because I don't know what this the is. Corp, the M Corp website. Dot com. Chris, I'm gonna look that up. I'm gonna look that up. The M Corp. All right. Uh, welcome back to Summer Games. Back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucking confused. Sam Vansterdam for a new look at State from EA. Oh, uh, what? From EA? Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Oh. Oh, crap. State. Some really bad stuff's happening up there. They're gonna need a lot of help cleaning that up. That's bad. Skate. Wait. Wait. Oh, we're skate! EA. Skate! I thought he said skate! We're working on it. We're, we're still, still working, working on, on it. it. Oh, I thought oh, he said look. skate! I thought he said Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. are definitely giving a whole fresh new look. Pre pre alpha. That's the first time I've ever seen somebody say a pre to a pre alpha. They're definitely giving a fresh new look. Wow! Skate. Come play with us. Yeah, that caught me off guard. Skate. I thought he said skip. Oh! Playtesting this fall. Shit. <laughs> Very exciting that people will finally be able to play skate on console in the near future. I saw he said skate. Our next one from here is an indie sensation from Japan that is adorable, deadly, and has over 25 million players worldwide. Power World? That's right, I'm talking about Power World. Yeah! I mean, just look at the giant depresso. Honestly, yeah. depresso. <laughs> giant <laughs> depresso. Honestly, now, this dev apparently is shady as fuck. Because yeah. apparently the they're, they're no notorious for just doing ripoffs of popular franchises. Is what I found out recently. Oh, this is people watching. Give like a new addition. Sakurajima update. New island. Ooh. Characters. Also, speaking of ripoff, did you see the guy who looked like Shadow? Yeah. yeah. New pals. <laughs> Hi, Darkrai. Xbox dedicated servers. This is the update. All the updates they're doing. <laughs> new buildings and level cap. I gotta get my ears clean. So are you subspecies? Totally from Metal Gear. Cause he did that. Hand 
Ball the arena, yeah. Well, mainly Metal Gear. Remember, that's when we had to build your own thing. New faction and boss. June 27th. Right. That was high on the Steam charts. Uh, congrats to uh, Power yes, Mobile was. Update. Next up, we've got a big announcement from Valorant. Here's Andy Ho and Anar Gilfeson from the Valorant dev team. Yay, Valorant. Uh, Valorant. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, everyone. Since 2020, we have been fortunate to serve players in their pursuit Still charging of what for blue call the Valorant moment. The big plays and clutches you make while all eyes are on you. Millions of players all over the world have earned their own Valorant moments on PC. And today, the stage is set to welcome a whole new group of players. Let's take a look. Alright games, they can't, cannot say name a fighting game to save their fucking life. Talk it down. Fucking 2XKO. What the fuck that name is though? Next to nothing about this game. Anybody else? I see a little bit from it. That's about it. But nothing. Only I know from it is from Angry Joe's reaction to its initial release, where you're charging for the color of the. Yeah. You want how much for this color? For blue. <laughs> for blue. Okay, so let me bother me about skate. How are you still only like pre pre alpha? <laughs> no, the I've game never seen that before. The game's being been worked on for I think like four years now. How are you still like pre pre alpha? Like it is cool they're doing playtesting this fall, but like I don't know. Exactly there. Yeah, it just feels like they're just not putting too much effort into it. That's what it sounds like. It just bugs me, that's all. It bugs me a little bit. And honestly, that's what it feels like. If they would have faith in what's like it's something, they put a lot of effort, but it feels, it feels like they're putting barely any effort into it. Not like it's still in development. Oh. Okay, I guess that's nice. Beta limited beta. Uh, limited. It's a limited that data. Was Valorant's core capital? Like only five of you can come in here five minutes at a time? Everything you just saw was captured on console and with a controller. Valorant is coming to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S this year. Our limited data is only saying PS5 there. And you can sign up right now at beta.playvalorant.com. Oh, for more. Yeah, that's what it is. We are so excited for your input to make sure that Valorant plays great on console. And we hope to see you soon in the limited beta. But before we go, here's the head of Valorant Studio, Anna Donnelly. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. One of my favorite things about Valorant has been seeing the community build the game and the sport right along with us. For the last four years, we have been on the most amazing journey, bringing Valorant to players all around the world, most recently to China, where I'm currently at Valorant Masters, one of our largest global tournaments and community celebrations. Seeing the community evolve as new players bring their passion and expression to Valorant has been the biggest joy of the ride so far. And now we are ready and so, so excited to welcome a whole new group of players onto new platforms. We hope you'll join us and we can't wait to see where you take us next. Okay. Pretty sure that wasn't live because I'm pretty sure it'd be the middle of the night that way. Uh, they're showing their, yeah, the teams and it's like, yeah, great time for a piss break. <laughs> so we just press, I take no offense. I wanna know what's next, I can't lie down, I couldn't depend. And if you say it one more time for me, I'll go through the best. I 
Yeah, they have to hold the spot, that's what it is. Cool. Exciting to have Riot on console with Valorant. Thanks for the team at or thanks to the team at Riot for sharing that with us here at SGF. Our next announcement is a big deal from our friends at DoorDash. Five weeks of deals with Summer of Dash. Uh, at least, at least you Dash said it proper now, this time. Zero dollar delivery fees and get 50% off your next DoorDash. Now you tell me that, you have to have already signed up. We've got a guy who is normally co-streaming our shows, Yang Ya, who is also an amazing voice actor, who's been in countless games such as uh, Like a Dragon and God of War Ragnarok. Well, next week, sure? Yong is going to be voicing a character in a movie, sure? Inside yeah, Out 2, where he plays a fictional video but... game character, Lance Slash Blade, and we've got your exclusive wait, wait, first wait. look. First look at Inside Out 2! What? Wait. To your eternal fate. Oh, Lance Slash Blade? He's a video game character. <laughs> Why is he here? Yeah, I always thought... Riley had a secret crush on him. I never saw the appeal. I will be a hero, but darkness holds my past. <laughs> Are you looking at how this guy is being? We were all banished here, deemed unfit, worthless. Oh, don't you dare say that! You do not deserve to be thrown away. <laughs> they're, they're, they're saying that this kid Riley basically got a crush on the world's version of yes, Cloud. Like it. of Cloud Strife. Okay. What the fuck is that move? No one is totally worth it. What the fuck is that move? With a feeble attack. But you see what I mean about the cloud strike look. I mean, like, he's got the single shoulder, the single shoulder pad, the giant sword, the spiky hair. Shoot. <laughs> you missed it. He actually went into the rolling of the ball. <laughs> but he voices that character in the movie. <laughs> I will set you free. Go into a ball and drop the sword. Just through June seventeenth, plus a chance to win five thousand dollars Samsung credit for U.S. residents. Summer Game Fest 2024. Oh my God! I've seen a lot of this. Oh, the ads for it. Where Chris, Chris Hemsworth? Hemsworth? Yeah. And it took me three of those ads. You're like, wait, that is Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. Is excited to share a new game that and they got Ken Jeong in this one. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's a lot of advertisement you see online, and it's a group of them, and he's one of them. <laughs> Him, uh, Chris Hemsworth, and a couple of other people. That's all that matters. And here is our big ad. Squad up! Boom, I mean, <laughs> oh, no. Super oh, here it is! What's yeah. going on? Watch. It's Chris Hemsworth. Look at your phone. Look at your phone. I'm the chicken. I'm the chicken. We're here to make your life more fun. Yeah. I drink. I drink right out of the carton. Well, I don't think you know the definition of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what we're in. Yeah, I make it from the waist down. So get out, we're of, the bed, dude. Get out of the bed. I make it from that. Tell me about yourself. I, I think I'm an excellent candidate for the job uh, because. Uh, uh, because you saw it play Tony, but you saw it play. He's a great He's one of the most equitable people I've ever met. I never realized that was more than it. Yeah, he's also such a lawyer. Why can't you? There's a lot of stuff that you're qualified to be an accountant. I don't think you're qualified. Which is why you'll have the job. Congratulations. I think that's more where that came from. I'm not going to touch that. Guys, maybe everything is in a squad activity. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's in the bathroom. Relax your so bowels. Take a shit. Relax your bowels. You know the difference? Sorry! It's not right. Mistaken for having you a hollow breaking. I've been wrong. I've been down. It's sad we know that song by heart. Wait, is it squat? Pathetic. 
Jinx. 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 Yeah. Wait, that's Dolph Lundgren. That's Dolph Lundgren. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I'm here to appeal to a younger audience. Wanna go chop some trees, would you? I'd be delighted. Wait, what's that? The song. Oh my god. I think their job here is done. Where are you going? You can't leave. Aye, aye, aye. We ain't never leaving Goodbye. Goodbye. Here. Where hey, Meg. came from. I came from inside me. <laughs> Wait. For him. He was about to go to the lips, so he's like, hey. <laughs> We're already making this creepier. Do you want me to shut the door or? That's fun when you squat up. Squat up. And I'm sorry. Kristen. What? What? He's eating a chicken! A chicken eating a chicken! What? What the fuck? Alright, please join me in welcoming to the SGF stage Monster Hunter series producer, Mr. Uh, Rielzo. So we're ending with Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, today we're going to Monster Hunter Wilds. Thank you, Jeff. Hello, everyone. We've prepared a very special trailer today for Summer Game Fest. I want everyone to be on the lookout for a very mysterious large monster near the end of the trailer, as it's an important monster within the game. はい、え、本作ではですね、えっと、没入感とアクションこちらの融合を目指して開発を進めております。え、モンスターハンターワイルズは2025年にプレイステーション5、Xbox <笑> As you can see, we're working to deliver a gaming experience that, immer that merges immersion and action. I hope players look forward to playing with their friends across different platforms when the game launches simultaneously in 2025 on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. They're going to be showing more games coming. Yeah. this is your last game you're showing, like, why was Squad Bus just your second last thing you're showing? Yeah, it's just like, like, I guess they paid that, that like, $750,000 for that cutscene. Trailer. And our first public hands-on playable demo of Monster Hunter Wilds will also debut at Gamescom. Thank you. Oh, that's why. The first they're playable they're demo will be They're building it up to the actual uh, demo. Yeah, because I think this is like a early spring release Yeah. for next year. Yeah, over there! But they want to get everyone hyped. <laughs> Apparently this game has a lot of callbacks in previous Monster Hunter games. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing mm -hmm. overall. Yeah. What? Excuse you. Oh. I'm oh. Tire. You got to be careful. Oh, they're dead. <laughs>
Meat. Oh. Meat. Oh. I mean, there's some is, so maybe I was wrong. Thank you, Riosa Sun. We will see you at Gamescom in August. Now, during last year's PlayStation Showcase, the game Phantom Blade Zero from S Game wowed us all with its blazing fast combat and stylish art. Well, I'm honored to share with you the brand new trailer for the game featuring all real gameplay. Here's our final game of the show, final Phantom game. Blade Zero. I don't even fucking remember this game. I do. I don't. <laughs> What's this say? Richard, is this another one of those stay of play where it shows swap the last two games? I remember this game too. I don't. I'm be honest. or something and then flung it flung it back to the other dude. Yeah. It's like yeah. that was a Dante move right there, okay? <laughs> World tour to demo twenty twenty four. Oh no they're going on tour for, for the, with demo. the demo. Yeah. Oh from now until Tokyo Game Show in September. That looks okay. so good. Full demo that media will be playing this weekend, so you'll hear much more about that. And that's going to do it for our Summer Game Fest live show. Thanks to Joy for joining us. Thank you, Jeff. I had such an Ooh, amazing time. Look at that Roman Reigns shirt in the background. Fest, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. And we have so much more, so stay tuned because Day of the Devs is coming up live right now on the stream featuring an hour of indie game reveals including the next game from Cappy and that's followed by Devolver Direct. Now keep checking SummerGameFest.com for other event streams this weekend and we'll see you again live this August 20th in Germany for Gamescom Opening Night Live. Thanks for watching everyone. Remember, Day of the Devs starts right now. So that was Summer Game Fest 2024 opening ceremonies. Now. Suffice to say, uh, I think the overall this was better than last year, but for the bigger stuff, I just, I kind of just wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. This wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. This event was good, because one thing that the biggest takeaway is, they did show off a lot of indie, like a whole lot of indie stuff coming. But I like how you think he started off going pretty much straight to the point, going, there's been a lot of crap pretty much yeah. this year, the beginning of this year, that has happened. That's why I love, if you notice the theme of it is a lot of it where he's like, another indie developer, another one, or another solo person who worked on this one, you know? It's like, wow, okay, to really dive into the indie side of things pretty much in this, in this, uh, yeah, this one overall. Um, well, and a good reminder, it's like, guys, the triple, you know, the triple A guys, they, they can and will fuck up a bunch, but yeah, it's like right here. It's but like, don't, but don't worry. We have you, yeah. Because there's plenty of other folks who still love of games, still want to make games, and know how great they can be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't this event wasn't bad. I just think, I think overall it was well done. Mm -hmm. Like, but the there's I was expecting a little bit more, and that's my fault. I think my expectations were a tiny bit higher than I want than I wanted them. Me, I was already expecting I was gonna. I think like for this. me personally, no offense, fan played zero, but that fell flat as your last game. That, yeah. that for me, that fell flat 
Like, honestly, I'm sorry. I know it looks dope, but like that felt flat for me. And it felt like, like, like what I was saying with the state of play, it feels like you should have switched out Monster Hunter Wilds and then, then they should have ended your show. Cause yeah. Like, before that, what was it? Before that, what was it? Before yeah, that one, yeah. was the freaking extended trailer for Squad Busters. Yeah. Okay, oh, I'll quickly go over this. If you guys say, say, want to say more about anything we're going to yeah, talk about, oh, just yeah. chime in. Uh, like I said, the show started with Keely addressing the, the massive dev layoffs that's been happening since we... I would, say, I, would say, I would say the beginning of this year, but let's no. be honest, it's been happening since late last year, but Bay after Black? that, LEGO Horizon Adventures? Oh yeah. It's a PlayStation first party game coming, a property coming to Switch. Oh yeah. Was the biggest takeaway from that. You know what? That's what it was. So like, that's pretty dope, Holiday 2024. Like a more humorous version, I guess, of the first like, humorous game. humorous version, where you can still, even, even then you can still you know, dress up with different outfits and have outrageous things that you would normally get in a Lego game overall. Yeah, Holiday 2024 for that one. Mm -hmm. um, no More Room in Hell 2. I didn't know it was... A, it's another one of those I didn't know was the was first single, one. Yeah, it was know. the first one. But it's a eight-player zombie co-op survival game mm -hmm. that promises to have a massive map of endless replayability. Well, and I can shed a little more light on that. Um, Keely did say it was a source mod, so I'm guessing it was a game that started out on... Started. It's like a source mod for like, you know, ha you know, Half Life or some other game. Yeah. I don't know which one, but but it seems interesting. I like the concept of it, where it's just like, you know, you literally get dropped in and you have to start working. You have to find your other teammates, pretty much through this big ass city, and try to team up and take on whatever task you have to take on. You know, especially in the zombie filled type of city overall, which it looks. I like the concept. It's really cool. Halloween <laughs> early access for that. Next up, um, Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, which we haven't had a Harry Potter Quidditch game in so quite some time. Didn't say sh really show much, like show much gameplay wise, but September third is the global release date for that. Uh, from the makers of um, shit, uh, Choo Choo Charlie, that creepy train game comes Cuff Bust, which I'm looking is like it looks like a cooperative prison break game. That's what it looks like, yeah. Um Fair Part, aside from everybody getting murdered by a helicopter in the end, was the um the release date which was twenty twenty five or sometime after I don't know. To be mm -hmm. honest, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. Uh quick we got a quick peek at Star Wars Outlaws, full footage at, at, at uh, Ubisoft Forward. Mm -hmm. Uh Neva, which we've seen before from the developer of Greece. They showed more it's of the gameplay in this Girl world. Girl and her uh, celestial de uh, celestial You can't do the other one, yeah. Celestial Wolf. Yeah. Um Okay. Uh for I think the second big announcement was uh, Civ Civ Seven. Yeah. I announced. I call it uh, twenty twenty five. Um, sh sh gonna be showing more at a direct event this August. I'm assuming anything in August is Gamescom. So like, yeah, twenty twenty five. Um, Black Move Wukong. We got a quick CG show for that. Don't blame them considering they've literally showed all, all all the gameplay they showed is just gameplay. Yeah. Um, they showed the, the editions you get, including a really sick collector's edition. Um, once human, this was that uh, HP Lovecraft looking like four player co op game. Yeah. Um, July 9th. Uh, we got more details on Metaphor Refantasia. Refantasia. Thank there you. you From the Persona devs who were there, uh, bringing up the job class system, which I forgot what the name of they were using, but 40 job aspects. jobs. Aspect. Aspect. 40 aspects. Aspect mm -hmm. classes. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, CG trailer for Batman Arkham Shadow, which Quest Three. Which um, one fascinating fact: R uh, Roger Craig Smith returning as the voice of the Arkham Batman, oh, yeah. which he hasn't done since Arkham Origins. Um, also, another thing just to point out: um, during the brief scene where they show Gordon during that, he looks a lot more like Ark like Arkham Origins Gordon. So I'm yeah. guessing timeline wise, this is supposed to be like. After, post, after Origins. Post Arkham yeah. Origins, yeah. So, you know, before even Arkham Asylum, which again makes sense with why they brought uh, Roger Craig Smith in to, to play the voice, because, play, yeah. because he's basically the one who plays that era Batman. Yeah. And I believe they said gameplay coming later this month or later? I think so, yeah. They later said, this month, yeah. yeah. Something like that, probably going to be a Gamescom. Game Game Ball 2024. Yeah, I think he, like, between, oh, yeah, Arkham, you said Arkham Origins and Arkham Asylum. Um, yeah, but it's only coming to the MetaQuest 3. 
That's it. Street Fighter VI Season 2 was announced. Pretty cool. I forgot there was only four in Season 1. Mm -hmm. There was only, like, was there only four? Like, there was Ed, it was Ed, Rashid, Akuma. It was Ed, Rashid, Akuma. There was a fourth one. Um, you guys know more about that than I do. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. They, sad, still, I don't get how it, you still don't have Sean from Third Strike in this, but, yeah. Uh, Terry and Mai from, no, best known from the S, their SNK fighting games, as well as Elena, who I haven't seen since Street Fighter V, and Bison, no, yeah. just Street Fighter V, Street Fighter IV. God yeah. damn, I'm an yeah, idiot. I've said yeah. that during it, too. Street Fighter IV returning, if you haven't seen since Street Fighter IV, and Bison making a return, which I was not expecting. Again, I can't, wait to see, I can't wait to see Max's reaction to that. So. Yeah. Is that the same as here? Low uh, oh, you could hear him losing. He, 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 he hear from his here. here. Uh, He's losing his from shit. From here. From here. From where we yeah. heard Ooh, that. Yeah. yeah. Surprising mix, too, overall. Um, tears of... Tear, tears or tears? I don't know. But I'm going to go with Tears of Metal. That's a cell shaded one where it's a... Tears of Metal, yeah. Co-op, roguelike, hack and slash game. Yeah. Coming... Uh, um, I, I, it was early accident right down. Look pretty dope. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero showed release off. Date, yeah. Now I have a release date, but actually showed off uh, the story mode for mm -hmm. the game. Mm -hmm. October 11th. Uh, Delta Force showed off its multiplayer gameplay trailer as well as a single player expansion based around the uh, iconic movie slash Black, book Black, yeah, Black, Black Hawk, Hawk Down. Down. Yeah. We got a quick uh, new footage of Fatal Fury City Wolves confirming two more characters being added to the roster. It looks like a little bit of sneak peek of the story mode as well as some mini games. Uh, Battle Crush. What was Battle Crush again? Was, oh, there was the one that they had the um, the uh, like uh, Greek gods and stuff like that. You had the Greek characters, pretty much. Oh yeah, it was that one that was really cutesy. Oh yeah, and, like yeah, that one pretty much. And like I said, we started noticing the names were like more the Greek gods. They were Greek, uh, you know, mythology. Jewish. Yeah, like yeah, like the little water girl was uh, supposed to be Poseidon, and then like the yeah. dude who looked like an anime villain was freaking Ares. Ares, yeah. Uh, so June twenty seventh, early access. Mecha Break, uh, August 20, 2024, closed beta. We saw this at Game Awards. Basically, a Mecha, like a Mech, like a Sony Enders Mecha Soul kind of game. Yeah. It's a big interesting game. Uh, August 2024, uh, Bloomhouse game, well, Bloom, uh, Bloomhouse announced Bloomhouse Games. Yeah. Showed off a lineup of like four to five select games. Yeah. What I like it, it was, I think I like, it was like six. Actually. What I like with the, even the came on stay is that pretty much just like how they do in the film pretty much they find those creative stories those stories that fit their field of what they're looking for in their genre you know and they that's where it's like they go to these they went they showed off you know each one of these developers going we're supporting them we're releasing it uh, you know the games because we love their story we love where they're going with it overall and that's why I love, that's where they're going going with this that's what they're happening that's what they're trying to do yeah and i i'm pretty sure it was actually six games it's just that we only saw five of them because the last one was the one they were talking about from um, Brandon Cronenberg. Cronenberg, yeah. They didn't Project show, C. They yeah, didn't, they didn't show, show us any of that. They didn't show anything. They just about, told us it was. They happening. said, "Hey, this, you know, this one's gonna be done. You know, it's called Project C, but we don't have any footage." They didn't show anything of that. They showed us the other five. They were showing, "Hey, we got a big name attached to this. That's what it is." Yeah. I mean, I'm happy for them. They've, it, we've, you and me have talked about this in our own react, regular yeah. reaction, but like, yeah. Bloomhouse is hit or miss. Yeah. With their movies. Um, but them just saying, this dude will, they're looking for like games that are kind of doing what they're, they already are already doing, doing with their movies. Which is smart. That's why I said it's yeah, that into that. I like that. Pretty cool. Um, next up, one of the other surprises, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Rita's Rewind. I think the only Coming to us from Digital Eclipse. Yeah. Okay, we okay. Let's talk about the like one. The, the, the one the cut scene. The cut scene. Animated don't cut look, scene. Don't, no, no, they're not. They're not animated. They're not animated. They're slideshows. Yeah, but they're just really bad slideshows. Which, so, to be fair, guys, that's exactly what the cutscenes were yeah. in the old Nintendo and Genesis. I, I get that's what they're games. doing. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. It's basically doing what Shredder's Revenge. Digital Clips yeah. is doing what Shredder's Revenge did. Well, Dot Emo and um, Hello Ga Tribute Games did with Shredder's Revenge. Yeah. Just basically taking that old format a lot of people liked from like classic versions of that game yeah. and bringing it to modern. And um, that aspect is cool. The gameplay showed is pretty dope. A lot of it, yeah, Charge Ren vibes, 
Oh, care reference. Um, but like, um, one cool thing that stood out was they had these. Um, oh my god, the uh, what's that? Uh, blast processing vision mode. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like uh, blast zone. Was that the name of the old mm -hmm. game where it was like it was a guy riding, it was firing beams at this oncoming like. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, showing basically moments where the rangers will hop on their bikes and, you know, on their, uh, on their uh, Power Ranger motorcycles and they'll actually, like, you know. The, yeah. Okay, they start, because at first we're like, okay, that's it, but then they start showing more of, like, oh, there's more that you can do than just, you know. There was no this. release window on that, was there? No, not that I Okay, remember, it was Digital Clip. Yeah, um, but I guess, But I can see where they're going, because I see why they're calling it Rita's We Went, because he brought up the good point where it's like, it's the, uh, it's the robot Rita from one yeah, Star Wars. Well, robot Rita shows up and there's regular Rita with her. Yeah, so it seems so, like it seems like they're teaming up to do this story pretty much. Kind of like we, we need to change a little the narrative here. Yeah, the ro know? the Robo Rita from the Once and Always special. Yeah. Uh Deer and next up Deer and Boy. See Neva except for plays plays girl and wolf with Deer and well boy. Boy, yeah. That I'm sorry, it, they they look different. But I got the same vibe from both of them. Yeah. Like you raise... start off when they're when there's this young little animal and then you're growing up along with this animal, you know, to its full potential. Yeah. Um looks looks nice. Um Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, which I know next to nothing about the first one. I know first one exists. It, it feels like this one they decided to add we need to add some humor to it. Yeah, like that one looks fun. You know, and I'm like well the first one is Kingdom Come Delivery Boy because the entire thing starts because you're trying to deliver a sword. Like it, it's all you're trying to do in the first one, but it didn't have like the humor that you it's like oh, yeah. because somebody felt like it, like I said, they watched Monty Python and was like Let's a little bit add that humor there's, to here. There, there's a there's a clip that I swear to God, I, you know, I called it during the actual stream. Like, people are gonna be Using quoting Monty Python. Over they're gonna be it. quoting Monty Python. They're gonna be over it, yeah. But it's like that's what it that's what it feels like. They like you know what? Let's add a little bit of humor to it and see what it does. And I'm sorry, it look, it's sounding and looking cool pretty much. Yeah, 2024 <laughs> is the release date, which is pretty nice. Um, Slitterhead from the Silent Hill creator. Yeah. Well, we got more vibes from this one, so basically you are, you are, I don't know what you are. Apparently there's a guy who looks serious, like the guy like from that. Sebastian from Evil Within in it, but like, the concept is like, you take control of other of people throughout the world and use, and use your abilities through them. So yeah. like, you have one point where the guy's using a bloody bone Gatling gun. Yeah. Another one where an enemy cuts your hand off, but you like, Grab it with your own blood and reattach yeah, that's it. The, yeah, that's the that's the motorcycle rider who also oh is packing a freaking shotgun and apparently one of their abilities is just like to basically summon a sword or something. Yeah, it looks you it looks unique enough. I think my only criticism I saw during it was like the frame rate was a bit like hiccup. Yeah, you can tell. You can and, tell. And that is we're not sure if that's actual frame rate hiccupness or, or if that's actually like a gameplay aspect. Like you know where is I'm going with frame rate issues. So next up, November eighth. Is the really typical slur head, but next up is wins the award for most what the fuck game we saw. Uh, oh yeah, the killer killer bean. bean, which is coming to us from one of the guys who worked on the choreography for the Matrix, one of the Matrix movies. Matrix Reloaded. He's Matrix human. Reloaded. Uh, you're the basically dude's a, the dude's a former like CG animator from Hollywood. And yeah, and that's just what he put together. That's what he did. That's where he so created. so the the pr so the basically the premise is that you are a former member of this secret. Organization. A organization who have n who are trying to over the world now. It's up to you to stop them, and it's basically um uh strain. It's strangle. It's agency. like stranglehold meets um oh what's that one Shadow Warrior? Yeah. Sh that one uh, yeah Shadow Warrior, but about a beam. Even and though I like it though, yeah, I like I what I love about our reaction. We're sitting there thinking. Did, are these they, the chicken McNuggets? Like, exactly, that's what they look like until we're like, oh, it's a bean, never mind. Well, until he says he, that his name is Killer Bean. Bean, and like, you're like, oh, okay, there's a bean. Oh, okay, okay, they're beans, okay. They look more like the Chicken McNuggets uh, character. From the old McDonald's like. commercials, yeah. Yeah, that's what they look like, but it's like, oh, okay, it's a, it, it, it's a bean. Okay, so, yeah, uh, summer 2024. Uh, next up, Cairn. We uh, it's a survival climbing game, which uh, we have. So we yeah, saw a little bit of it. It looks like it's very interesting. I like the concept with it. Uh, I don't remember Wander stuff. What was Wander stuff? 
Oh, that's the one where the where the uh, white haired lady was saying that she was like a warrior meant to be. In, like, remember, it was like a tea shop, but she's like running that. a tea uh, shop. Oh, oh yeah, it's from the Stanley Par one yeah, Parable one. Yeah, yeah, where it's like yeah. there's more to it, you know, to to, to, to that little story, to, more to her character. Twenty twenty four. Okay, I'm gonna probably quicken the pace a little. Yeah. Unknown Nine Awakening, uh, Fall 2024. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember what Anno Tree of the Last Song was. Oh, that was the one. Is that the, the mask one? Yeah, the mask. Yeah. CG trailer. I'm about to say, but interesting. First Ascendant, July second release date. Uh, our Inner Sloth game, Inner Sloth announced Outer Sloth. Um, a, so basically taking all the funding they've gotten from the success of Among Us and putting it towards other indie devs. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lineup of games. Helping them and supporting them pretty much in their, you know, try, you know, just trying to get back into the game pretty much. Especially uh, hey, hey guys, thanks for all the money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we got a teaser trailer for the, the Among Us animated series, which has a very stacked Voice cast, voice cast. Even though we, it's like it, they played it off as if there was no voice, but it's like no, there's gonna be voice work. Okay. Um, Sonic Shadow Generations now has a release date, October 25th. Um, Dune Awakening uh, explained its story. It's a basically a what if Paul Atreides was not born scenario. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, Battle Aces. Oh, that was that. We don't know if it was a mech game or not. Game. Yeah. Yeah. It. Um. The dude. It's an RTS game, like so. Um, and the dude, and I think the dude also said that it's supposed to be like an online multiplayer one too. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, bat, uh, uh, final season three, gonna be in Kyoto. Uh, I'll wake new. I'll wake two news. Physical oh, editions yes. coming this fall with a digital deluxe version as well as a collector's edition. And then, release. then they announced coming out tomorrow. As of this recording tomorrow. Uh, I'll wait to Night, Night Springs, Springs. Yeah. which will feature three, three separate stories yeah. set within the Night Springs facade, yeah. featuring was it Alice? No, not Alice. Um, the the waitress from Al the first Alan Wake game, mm -hmm. uh, Sean Ashmore from Quantum Break, Break, and Jesse Faden from Control. Yeah. Um, so even he said like from your three favorite characters. That's yeah, what he's because he hints at was talking about how we see you guys taking pictures of your Remy game collection. Like yeah, that. exactly. And, and no, yeah, he said that's why he's do. That's, he that's, that's why, why they're finally like doing the physical releases because. Everyone's been like flooding our social media with pictures of your Remedy game the game collection, and it's like, which, which are all missing a very particular title. Yeah, <laughs> because um, we didn't make a physical one yet. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks pretty dope, and I can't wait to eventually get a Series X to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, next up, New World Atrium. Uh, New World announced an expansion called Aeternum. Honkai Star Rail announced something uh, dark and darker. <laughs> uh, they they, dark and they announced the next Most set of like release. Release, yeah. Really don't care. Uh, not <laughs> you. I, <laughs> not you. I, not you let me keep me. You're letting me know what it is. But I really, I I'll say they really care. But yeah, that's what it is. It's like basically, what the next major update's gonna be. Dark, dark and darker. Dark and darker. Did dark and darker. That was the the yeah. That's the one where it's, um you kept bringing up as like Skyrimish type of looking. And, oh yeah, that's the one, one where we're talking about like keeping your treasure. And the, shit. The one, yeah, exactly. The one, I, the one I kept on calling Ultima Underworld. <laughs> and when I'm sitting there going, why is the skeleton bleeding? Because it's like he keeps hitting the skeleton. It's like it, it's bleeding. So that's the uh, bleed. Yeah. Uh, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess coming out July nineteenth. Uh, Hyper Light Breaker, which it took us till the end of the fucking show to realize really? what it was. Yeah. Party Animals, I believe, is getting an update to add new modes and abilities. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. yeah, uh, new more modes, yeah. Skate, which we... I thought we they saw were saying skate. Pre, pre alpha I thought they were saying skate. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Skate. Skate. Uh, yeah, it looks... From what they literally showed, it looks like it's going to be more of an open world multiplayer game that's this time around. Like, that's like, what we were trying to push for. Yeah. Uh, yeah play, uh, console play test coming this fall, mm -hmm. even though it's in pre pre alpha, and the game's been worked on for like four years, or roughly three or four I years. I've never seen that pre pre alpha. I'm, mm, I'm honestly still having trouble wrapping my head around the fact that they're even doing another skate game. It's like. Yeah, they've been working out. They announced. It was funny. I remember yeah. this. I think Chris remember this. It was in 2020. They announced. That they got greenlit for it, but they hadn't even started it yet. Yeah, but they got—they just wanted to make it announce that and, they got it. And yeah, it's basically a reboot of the original Fran original series. Right, I get, I get like all that. It was something that people, a... something that people have been wanting. That's why, because oh. we haven't gotten a, uh, you know, like a skate game like that 
in for like for you know, in the longest time. That's pa why. Pa okay. After that, we got Power World uh, Sakura Jima update, which includes new land, new raids, new sub new, new, pa new yeah. pals, new sub species of pals. Yeah. June twenty seventh. Cool. Um, and a new faction. New yeah, faction. Yeah. New faction. Yeah. Uh, Val. Oh yeah. New story aspects too. Yeah. Uh, Valorant is coming to consoles. Uh, uh, play what? test for consoles for and yeah, new characters coming that they're bringing in. They're, they, show, they showed off a little bit of what would they do? Um, a clip, movie <laughs> clip from Inside Out Two. Because when the character is a video game, it's a video game character that she Riley has a crush. adores. She has a crush. Even though he has the worst ability, <laughs> yeah. ever, which is like Drops a, a sword and goes into a little ball. A slow, extreme they, slow mo version of Blanca. Yeah, they ba yeah, like basically like, I think he like he's supposed to basically be their world's version of Cloud, and, yeah. and she picked him for their version of Smash Brothers, and then he got like stomped by Pac-Man. Like, like, and like, by Pac I like it, don't worry, I'll get you out of this jar. And he literally goes in that move, and he drops the sword, and he goes in a little bowl, and I'm like, I don't think it's gonna break. Because <laughs> the way they're showing it, I'm like, he's going so slow. Uh, squat, and, and he's being voiced by the YouTuber <laughs> Young Yi. Yeah, exactly. Extend it. Next up, we got extended trailer of Squad for the Squad Busters mobile awesome. game. Fucking it awesome! It was so ridiculously stupid. I enjoyed it. It was so awesome. We all got to sing along with it. <laughs> uh, I got another. I got another new story show for Monster Hunter Wild. Then confirming the first gameplay playable gameplay will be at Gamescom this August. Um, then our f final game was Phantom Blade Zero. They show, I believe it was from, I uh, think, uh, Summer Game Fest last year at Game Awards. They, they were showing a little bit more off, but also announcing their tour for their, for the, the you know, to show off the demo pretty much. And that was it. Which, it, which the demo is only going to be shown off at actual Game at Fest, the actual, like Summer Game Fest. Yeah, at the actual event, that whatever's going on for that event for during that time period. Yeah. Which, well, with the last and one on the list was Tokyo, Tokyo Game Show, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, yeah, thank you for remembering that, because I, I totally blanked out, because I was like, that really you that's your yeah, last game of the show what, really, that's think. your last game of the show yes like, <laughs> so far these endings of these the, so far from the it's like I State, I, state of play, tr Silent Hill transmission, like you feel now like, it's like it's lacking of like the ending usually the ending oh should be at that God. big epic of like yes that's how you end it kind of thing but it's like lately it's, so far it's like I don't and, and, and here's the other sad thing to consider guys those spots are prob they probably consider those premium spots, so someone probably paid a lot of money for that spot. Spot, yeah, that's the problem. It's just oh, like, it's yeah. you know, but and it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm just, that's what I'm finding funny is that like, okay. so the, so the, so somehow Capcom got beaten out on paying for the final spot. Yeah. Okay, so uh, overall, I think the why I love, okay. I, okay, one thing, it's simple, one thing you like, one thing, one thing you hate it. So for me, one thing I liked was more to focus on indie devs, mm -hmm. uh, more to focus on indie devs. I really did enjoy that, that was really good. Didn't like, kind of like, the structure, like, I, for the end at least. Because like, I don't know any about Family Zero because there's a lot, a lot of Keeley's events, they show a shit ton of stuff, and I'm not gonna remember all of it, you know. And I didn't remember Family Zero, and it looked fun, but it wasn't my cup of tea, honestly. And yeah. Well, and the other problem for something like that, it's the fact that, you know, kind of like the thing I don't like that I'll build upon your thing for. The fact that they'll that they can get some of these devs to come out here and talk about this stuff. But so far, they've had no one talk about this game. Yeah. And they keep on, like, putting emphasis on it, like it's supposed to be some big some, deal. So it's, it's like, you know, some big and it's thing. it's like, you guys haven't told us anything about it. Yeah, I mean, had somebody come out and talk about more. No about one's it, explained what the hell is going on. Yeah. No one has explained why the hell They're we should care. Yeah. And the gameplay, like, we're getting some ideas about the gameplay, but, I mean, if you guys don't, you know, again, come out here and tell us a bit more about it, it's... Because they're, what they're trying to, they're, what they're hoping for is they're trying to hope that the gameplay explains itself. Okay, yes, but we need more emphasis on what the fuck is going on. You know, please tell us, like, who's this person and what's going on? Why are we playing this character? Why was a, hang, a horse hanging, you know, from a tree? You know, it's like, that's the only part. Why, I, it's like, that's give the us only, emphasis. That's the only part that caught me off guard. I, I, can, I can break it down to one sentence. 
why should we care? Exactly. Okay, so, so you're, for you, what's again? You're, you're, you're one yeah. positive, one negative. One negative. Well, that's well, that was my negative. Is just like in some some of these games, it's like you know they're they're not bringing anyone out to tell us why should we mm -hmm. care. Exactly. Other than just it's a game. It's like, but the thing that I do like is that, again, like, at least we are getting like you know an emphasis on a lot of these indie games. I'll admit yeah. that was the thing that I liked. Um, you know. Yeah, um, you know that that really was the thing I liked. I liked the fact that they're showing that, like, you know, even with all the bad shit that's been going on this year, you know, this past year with a lot of the stuff in the games industry, you know, a lot of the AAA fuck ups and all this, and the layoffs and all the bad shit we've been hearing about, that they're basically trying to say, hey guys, look, don't give up, don't lose hope, just because that shit's happening doesn't mean there's not good shit happening. Yeah. Okay, and Christopher? I think. One positive, one negative. It, it doesn't have to be overall. It could be like a one trailer overall, or something. But it's, I think I'm, I'm, I'm on board with you pretty much on what you stated. And that is, I love I loved how they show off a lot of the indie games. I loved it, pretty much. Because it's like, knowing what's going on in the industry right now, it's like, we got to show off, hey, you know, these are the people who are dedicated. These are people who love gaming and stuff like that. And this is what they're coming up with. This is what they're bringing and delivering to us, which I loved. It's just like... Like I said, though, it's just the ending. It's it's a type of thing where I have a combination of both, both what you said, pretty much. One, it's like, okay, if you're gonna have this, give us more emphasis, right? Pretty much, give us more story. Give somebody, you know, give us a, a reason to love this game. Give us a reason to care. But also at the same time, I agree with you, where it's like, give us something that everybody's excited about. So it's the, excited. That's like at the, the end. The, at at least. the end, at least, everybody's they nailed up. Because they nailed that, sorry to interrupt, but that, they nailed that last year with uh, FF7 Rebirth being your last thing. Because you like, give something that everybody is cherishing, everybody cares about, and knows what's going and on. And that's why I say it should have been like, it's like with the stay play where they should have swapped, like, and they should have swapped Astro and Monster Hunter Wilds. Here it is like, they should have swapped Family Zero with Monster Hunter Wilds. That and with Monster Hunter Wilds. It's like, listen, I may not be a fan of it, but there was a fandom for it that's actually, out there. Actually, I just thought of a good idea that they probably should have done. I know they wouldn't have done it, but I'm being reminded because of we've got the indie stuff playing on yeah. here, and one of the Bloom House games, Fear the Spotlight, is showing right now. Yeah. And I just thought, actually, wouldn't that have been a great way to end the show with the Bloom House Spotlight? Maybe. Maybe. Well, yeah, with that little mini showcase to then end it out with, you know, oh, Jason Bloom, the CEO of Bloom House, coming out. Uh, yeah, talking and, about, and, yeah. You know, and bringing out the, the uh, other lady, the one who's basically yeah. in charge of Bloom House Games. Yeah. Come out and ha of them say at that point, "Hey guys, check all this shit out." Yeah, it's like yeah, but that's not yeah, like, that, but that's that's, that's yeah. gonna move for that. Like we said, it was good. It just I don't know. It's it just it was good for indie for the for the indie devs, but I was expecting something more to like kind of cap out things. So yeah. take it what you will. Yeah, I said no, no grades this year for key. It's key threes. So and it's no longer E3s. E3s officially dead on arrival. Dead no. now. So I fear just one pod one they give going forward for our conference reactions. Just you know, just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. So other than that, folks, if you need a channel, you can hit the like button. If you want to talk to us more about stuff like this, comment down below. If you want to share us around, share it around. And if you like us just a little bit more than anybody else when it comes to talking about. Key, the key threes, hit the subscribe button down below and hit that bell icon as well. Let us know what you thought of the Summer Game Fest 2024 opening ceremonies. What were some favorite announcements? What were some favorite moments? What do you think about our thoughts about how this should have been structured compared to how it was actually structured? Let us know in the comments down below. Put down what you thought of our reactions overall, but most importantly, we thank you. And also put that action. also put down which what what you thought was great about this and also what was disappointed about it. You know, you're, you know, one with two cents on each side, pretty much. Let us know also in the comments down below on that. Yes. And, of course, Richard, where they can uh, find you? Where can they find you elsewhere on the internet aside from this channel? All right, guys, you can find us at nerdychicuniverse.com. Um, we have the actual website, and we've also got Nerdy Chic Universe here on YouTube. The links will be down in the doobly-doo down below. Uh, we've actually talked to a bunch of the folks that, like, you know, do voice work and stuff for, the, for these games. Um, Mari does like makeup stuff on the channel. We're doing gaming stuff, so you know, lots of great stuff to check out on the channel. Yeah, and so if you want to check out our reactions to last year's opening ceremonies, you can do that right here on the channel. If you want to also check out me and Richard's more recent stream reactions to the May and May State of Play 
the summer state of play and tr Silent Hill transmission, uh, you can check that out right here on the channel as well. And of course, coming up, we do have the uh, Xbox, well, Devolver Direct coming up as well as the Xbox Showcase and more to come, so stay tuned. But until next time, though, I'm Kristen. I'm Christopher. And I'm Richard from Nerdy Chic Universe. And this has been a very key three filled episode of SRB Gaming. And we will see you guys later. Till next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you want to check out any of our previous reactions, as well as one of our other SRB shows, check out one of the playlists down below. And if you want to check us out in the social universe, you can find us on Twitter and start us at Super React Bros. As well as on Facebook at Super Reaction Bros.